Hello everyone, and welcome to the fanfic heaven, so we are back with an interesting movie on what if Naruto awakens to a new and mysterious bloodline. But before we start, I just want to remind you to please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you enjoy my content. Let's start the story. Well, this was certainly a fine kettle of fish. First, he had been blasted away by that weird gust of wind, and now this giant ass snake was trying to fucking eat him alive. Just great, really great. Can't sink much lower, can ya Naruto? The Uzumaki muttered to himself as he reflected on his past. He recalled the numerous times he played pranks throughout Konoha, and noted that he had wasted valuable time on those childish hijinks instead of training. All the time he spent fawning for Sakura when her heart was already set for another. His failures and victories, the people he met during his adventures, so on and so forth. He also reflected briefly on his dream to be Hokage, honestly speaking. He wasn't really in it for the approval of the villagers that long mistreated him. He wanted to make the village a better place for those he cared about and for those suffering similar trials to what he may have suffered in the past. Additionally, it was also a sort of revenge against those who mistreated him. However, none of that really mattered right now as he felt the snakes inside slowly crushing him. I'm not gonna die here, not just yet, I won't. Naruto promised himself, and for some reason, he couldn't help but smile without fear even as he glared down at the serpent's dark abyss of a gullet that threatened to consume him. If, I can just, move my arms, Naruto growled as he pushed against the slimy walls threatening to crush him, planning to use the shadow clone jutsu to force his way out. Then, without warning, what can only be described as a miracle happened. Meanwhile, in another part of the forest, Sakura stared out in horror as Sasuke clashed with a strange Kusa Nin that appeared out of nowhere and found that her crush was actually getting crushed, hard. The Uchiha was completely powerless in the face of this unknown foe, he even used his entire repertoire of jutsu to try and drive back the Kusa Nin, but Sasuke's opponent either dodged or deflected all of his attempts. At this point, it seemed like the Kusa Nin had just been playing and toying with the young Uchiha, and now Sasuke was on the ground, writhing in pain after the Kusa Nin had bitten him on the neck strange black markings appearing on Sasuke's face. I suppose you'll have to do Sasuke-kun, someday soon you'll come to seek me out for more power. It is the only way you'll ever hope to overcome Itachi. The Kusa Nin spoke, a small part of his, her, their face melting away, revealing some deathly pale, chalky white skin. itachi I. Sasuke growled out in rage, cursing himself for his weakness while some images of the Uchiha massacre flooded his mind. The pale ninja ripped off the rest of the face he was wearing and smiled sadistically towards the Uchiha, then directed his attention towards the form of Sakura who was frozen in terror. Doesn't seem worth the effort to kill a nad like you. For now, I think it best you look after Sasuke-kun. He's not looking so well at the moment. The pale man spoke in a slightly mocking voice, then his face fell as he noticed something odd, the numerous trees began to shake violently and a loud rumbling could be heard. The ground below began to quake and crack as the trees shook even more violently, then it hit Sakura that this was an earthquake. Taking the momentary distraction as her only chance, she quickly snatched up the fallen Uchiha and took him away as fast as she could carry him, leaving behind the serpent-like man who seemed busy steadying himself. He grimaced a bit, but decided that this was fine. He accomplished his objective with the Uchiha, once the curse mark was set in, he'd send some foes in the boy's direction for a more thorough testing. For now though, he would wait until the earth settled, unknown to him, these quakes and many more phenomena were happening everywhere. In the span of the next few minutes, the shinobi nations experienced strange weather and other phenomenon. In Suna, snow began to fall heavily, blanketing the hot deserts and the village itself without any warning. In Iwa, massive tornadoes appeared and began tearing through the lands with unnatural force. In Kumo, massive tidal waves and typhoons began crashing at their borders. In AIM, the ever-present rainfall came to a sudden stop with the raindrops suspended in midair before suddenly ascending back up into the sky. In Kiri, a massive thunderstorm appeared as bolts of lightning rained down from the heavens, obliterating a large portion of the village. And on and on these happenings continued, the universal reaction of the people, as one would expect, was that of shock, confusion, and terror. Then just as mysteriously as it all started, it suddenly came to a stop. Once things finally calmed, there was only one question that people could ask, what form of power could have caused this to happen? Meanwhile, back with Naruto. 
Ow! 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 What the hell happened? Naruto asked himself as he emerged from the smoldering carcass of the giant serpent that had attempted to devour him. The blonde tried to recall what happened as he racked his brain for an explanation. He remembered that his body had gotten all hot, then everything went black, then he heard some kind of explosion, and then when he opened his eyes again, the snake had been fried from the inside out and split open by unknown means. Choosing not to question his good fortune, the blonde was simply happy to be alive and well. Now he had to regroup with his team and complete this leg of the exam so he could get the hell out of this crazy forest. He felt himself shudder a bit as a tingling sensation ran across his body, he looked down and noted that the upper half of his jumpsuit had been destroyed leaving his upper body exposed. Whoa, did I bulk up? The blonde asked himself as he took note that his arms were much more muscular and he was now rocking a six-pack as well, his new build being similar to that of a swimmer. Huh, did I unlock some kind of a bloodline or something? Wonder what it is or does exactly? He wondered aloud as he flexed his right arm admiring his newfound form. He couldn't help but smile a little since it seemed that the heavens had finally smiled upon him. Whatever this bloodline was, it just might help give him the boost he needed to advance in his shinobi career. He then winced a bit upon noting that his pants felt uncomfortable tight around his lower body, it would seem he would need to acquire a change of clothes as soon as possible, however, that was something to deal with later since he had more important matters to attend to namely reuniting with his team and escaping from this hell hole. His musing was interrupted when he heard a loud scream echoing across the forest, prompting him to look in the direction of the noise since it sounded a lot like Sakura. Off in the distance, he saw a girl with red hair and glasses, running for dear life from a very large and very, very, angry bear that was hot on her heels. Naruto in good conscience couldn't bring himself to leave the girl behind to be mauled or potentially eaten, so he decided to rescue her. Focusing some chakra to his legs, he launched himself on an intercept course to cut off the bear so he could draw it off or something. Naruto found himself moving much faster than he had ever gone before as he jumped from branch to branch amongst the trees, and in the span of a few short seconds, found himself almost on top of his quarry. Shadow Clone Jutsu Naruto called out as he summoned a pair of clones who then grabbed his arms, and then like a slingshot, threw him forward in the direction of the bear causing the blonde to slam into the bear's massive body, and make it fly away which made it collide into a tree with enough force to snap its neck before falling to the ground completely limp. Whoa, didn't realize I'd gotten that strong, but I'll still take it. Naruto whispered to himself since he had planned on throwing the bear off balance and distracting it for a bit so that the girl could get away, but this worked better. He could bring the bear back to his team with the help of his clones for food, that way he wouldn't be coming back totally empty-handed. Holy crap, you, you killed it. The girl spoke that had been previously chased by the now deceased bear, apparently the sound of it impacting against the tree caught her attention and made her stop upon seeing her rescuer. She was staring at the Uzumaki boy with tearful eyes filled with gratitude for the rescue, her legs shaking beneath her as she slowly sank to the ground, no doubt being exhausted from the run and from sheer terror. You okay there? He asked the girl. At his question the crimson-haired girl scrambled to her feet and wrapped her arms around his midsection in a hug as she repeated, thank you, over and over again. From what he could tell, he couldn't see any serious injuries, she was probably just in shock for the moment. She'd need a bit to calm down a bit, but otherwise she'd be just fine, though she'd probably have nightmares relating to bears for a long while. Then, all of a sudden she released him from the hug and recoiled in disgust while exclaiming, holy crap. You frickin' stink. For a brief moment, the whiskered teen felt insulted since he took good care when it came to personal hygiene, then he remembered where he had recently been and understood the reason for her reaction. Oh. Right. Sorry. Ya see, a snake tried to eat me just a bit ago. You're probably smelling that. He explained while rubbing the back of his head, causing the spectacled girl to nod in understanding. Yeesh. Looks like I'm not the only one having a bad day, huh? Um, thanks again. My name is Karen. She spoke and then gave a polite bow as she introduced herself, then her body went rigid as she stared wide-eyed at her rescuer as some drool suddenly fell from her lips. Um, nice to meet you Karen. I'm Naruto Uzumaki, why are you looking at me like that? He asked, feeling slightly uncomfortable with her staring, his question seemed to quickly snap her out of her stupor as she wiped the drool from her lips and adjusted her glasses. Oh, sorry. I didn't meant to stare or freak you out. 
it's just, I don't think I have ever met anyone with such enormous chakra reserves in my entire life before. She answered, her words causing Naruto to gain a better understanding of what she meant. Oh. You can sense my chakra huh? You must be what's called a, sensor, I once read from somewhere that some ninjas have advanced sensory abilities and can detect the chakra signatures of others. Sounds like a useful skill. Anyways, where's your team? He asked out of curiosity, in response to his question Karen pointed towards the deceased bear, more specifically its massive paws that were covered in blood. By the looks of it, her teammates didn't make it. Told them it was a bad idea to mess around, but would they listen? No, what do I know? I'm just the, never mind. She grumbled as she rubbed her arms a bit, from the sounds of it, there seemed to be a story here, but the blonde didn't wish to pry into it. Sounds like you weren't treated all that well, huh? No serious loss then. Anyways, do you, uh, want to come with me? Wouldn't feel right to leave you here all alone. He offered and extended a hand to the crimson-haired girl, who quickly took it with a heartfelt smile. Thank you again, you're a really nice guy. By the way, where is your team? Karen asked since the blonde was all alone, had his teammates gotten themselves killed as well. Oh right. I got separated from them. I was about to go looking for them, then I heard you screaming. Would you mind helping me out? That sensory power of yours would be a big help. Naruto requested, earning an eager nod from Karen who now had a bright smile, obviously wishing to help pay back her rescuer. It'd be my pleasure, but, before we do anything else, there's something I have to do first. You saved my life, I owe you my life in return. So, I gotta do this. She spoke as she pulled out a kanai. The blonde was confused as he wondered what she was going to do, but decided to stay quiet and see how this played out. She pressed the tip of the kanai into her thumb until some blood was drawn, she then took Naruto's hand and looked up at him as if silently asking permission. He gave a nod of assent, prompting her to use the kanai to draw blood from his own thumb. Once that was done, she pressed their bleeding thumbs together and spoke. I, Karen, now formerly of Kusa, hereby swear a life dead to Naruto Uzumaki now sealed in blood. Where he goes, I follow. Whatever his goals, I will support. From here on, I am at his service until the Shinigami takes me. Naruto was silent for a few moments, he had heard of life debts before and in some cases, the oaths that follow with them. Though he never thought that such an oath would be given to him like this. He briefly thought about Haku and wondered if the ice user had sworn such an oath to Zabuza given Haku's intense and unwavering loyalty to the swordsman. Now that the oath was complete, Karen gave a satisfied sigh and smiled before speaking, Okie dokie. I'm all ready now. Is there anything you can tell me about how to find your team? Any clues might help me narrow down my search. The blonde hummed in thought as he tried to think of anything that might help Karen locate them, he then hesitantly pointed in a general direction and spoke. I think I was last with them somewhere that way, but I'm not sure. They likely moved on since then. Not sure if this helps but one's a guy and the other's a girl, although I think Kakashi, our sensei, once mentioned that Sakura's chakra reserves were fairly weak. A boy, a girl, one having weak chakra reserves, I've made do with far less. Give me a sec. Karen spoke as she began to concentrate and began her search for potential chakra signatures, she found a few that were in groups of three, and immediately ignored them before moving on with her search. As she did this she couldn't help but think to herself, huh. He said his name was, Uzumaki, but he doesn't have the red hair. Mixed heritage maybe? Well, I'll ask him about it later when we're out of these fucking woods. As she did this, Naruto summoned a group of clones to prepare the dead bear for transport, as they began to work together to lift the bear. Naruto took note of a tattoo on their backs that resembled a golden dragon. A. N. Think Ryuji Goda's tattoo, Yakuza game series. He had to admit, the tattoo was pretty badass, but he certainly didn't remember getting such a tattoo, he could only conclude that it must have appeared after his bloodline awakened, he also wondered if it had a different purpose than for aesthetic reasons. He had no time to consider the subject further as Karen called out, Aha! Naruto! I got a hit! I think it might be them! At that, the blonde grinned as he cracked his neck and spoke, Okay Karen! Lead the way please! The spectacled girl gave a quick thumbs up and took off in the direction of the chakra signatures she detected, allowing for the Jinchuriki and his clones to follow after her. This had definitely been a trying day, but he and his team weren't out of the exams just yet, and he was dead set on becoming a chunin, 
if only for the sake of breaking away from Team 7. Until that time, he'd do all he could to pull his weight and carry them to victory. Later, with Sakura Haruno, the sounds of loud grumbling could be heard as Sakura clutched at her empty stomach, she made a small whine but shook her head as she watched over the unconscious form of Sasuke. It had been some time now since their encounter with that creepy guy from before, they had lost their scroll to him, and Sasuke showed no signs of waking up. Even worse, he appeared to be suffering from a fever and was mumbling things in his sleep, spooky stuff, scary stuff, awful stuff. The kind of stuff that made Sakura question if her crush had ever been to visit a shrink lately. Most of it seemed to pertain to either the Uchiha massacre, or about his elder brother Itachi. When the latter came up, Sasuke kept mumbling about the things he wished to do to his elder brother which deeply disturbed the pinkette. While she could understand her crush's intense desire for revenge the things he was talking about seemed so, cruel and unnecessary. Was this seriously the guy she had been crushing on for so long? He was honestly creeping her out right now. She shuddered and turned her back to the unconscious Uchiha to keep a watch out for any potential enemies, or for their lost teammate Naruto. She kinda wanted to make a joke and say that he was probably, too stupid to die, or something like that, but deep down, she knew that he was perhaps their best shot out of this mess given Team 7's current state. She quietly lamented as she couldn't help but admit to herself that she was by far the weakest link in the team. She was smart, sure, but none of her book smarts could help out during missions, she also didn't have any jutsu techniques that could contribute either. Sasuke had his fire jutsu and sharingan now, Naruto had his clones and virtually unwavering determination, and what did she have? A whiny and annoyingly shrill voice and not much else. Some days, a part of her believed she was placed in the wrong team. She quickly shook her head, trying to brush off her melancholic feelings and attributed her sour mood as a result of her current hunger. Kami, almighty Naruto. Where are you when we need you most? She called out in frustration then quickly clapped a hand over her mouth, fearing that her voice may have just given away their position to anyone nearby. Then, as if on cue, a crimson-haired girl appeared followed by Naruto himself and a bunch of his clones that were carrying around the body of a bear. Yo, you call Sakura, the whiskered teen asked with a cheeky grin, making the pinket jaw drop in surprise. So this is your team huh? No offense but it looks like they've seen better days. The spectacled girl spoke, pointing out the unconscious state of the Uchiha and the Pinkett's exhausted and hungry appearance. Seems they had a rough day too. Naruto noted as he scratched his cheek with a lone finger. Sakura then seemed to shake off her shock and quickly rushed forward towards the blonde, her face a mixture of anger and worry. Naruto. Where have you been? What happened to you? Who is this girl with you? How did you get ripped? She asked in a rapid fire manner while pointing between the blonde teen and spectacled girl. Inside voice, please, Sakura. Pretty sure you just announced our presence to everyone within a 50 mile radius. Now, take a deep breath and relax. You mind starting first explaining what happened while I was gone? The blonde questioned. The pinkette had to mentally kick herself for making the same mistake again. She then took several deep breaths to calm herself down and decided to inform Naruto of everything that happened. Okay. Okay, you remember that creepy Kusa Nin with the long tongue at the gates? That person attacked me and Sasuke Kun and stole our scroll and then tore off their own face, revealing that he was a really scary guy with pale skin, and then he bit Sasuke Kun on the neck. He hasn't woken up since, and there's this really weird mark on his neck now. She briefly summed up while Naruto rubbed his chin and Karen had a look of confusion. She didn't really get all of that, but it sounds like they went through the ringer as well. Without a word, Naruto gently pushed past the Haruno and went to check on the Uchiha. He knelt down next to his teammate and pulled down his collar a bit, only to find a familiar mark on his neck. Upon seeing it, the blonde thought to himself, Shit. This looks exactly like Anko's curse mark, that can only mean Orochimaru. Son of a bitch. I want to tell Sakura, but I should probably wait until we're out of the woods. I shouldn't add to the pile of our already extensive list of problems. This looks like serious trouble to me. We should report this to the Hokage ASAP. Now to answer your own question Sakura, I was blasted away by a gust of wind then a snake tried to eat me alive, I unlocked a bloodline of some sort that must have triggered a massive growth spurt, I saved Karen over there from being eaten by a bear, she swore life dead to me, then helped guide me back to you and Sasuke. 
he explained to the pinkhead with the spectacled girl giving a quick two-fingered salute to greet her new comrade. Whoa! Was all the pinkhead could say as she blinked her eyes she wanted to ask more about his new friend, but her stomach growled loudly which made her blush profusely, at that Naruto simply chuckled and spoke. Oh, oh growling bellies. I knew this may be a problem, luckily I came prepared. Hope you like bear. At this point, I think I could eat almost anything. Sakura whined as she slumped down to the ground and sighed tiredly. Me too. I'm getting hungry myself. Karen spoke since she hadn't had anything to eat recently either with Naruto scratching the back of his head as a small sweat drop formed, he was starting to get hungry as well. I'm gonna start getting some food ready. Looks like we could all use a hot meal. We can figure the rest out once we fill our bellies. I'll stay within hollering distance in case of trouble. Naruto spoke as he and his clones carried the bear off somewhere further into the woods, probably so that any blood or other scents don't attract any animals to their campsite. The girls nodded as they took shelter in the mouth of the small cave that Sakura had chosen as shelter. You should try to get some sleep while you can. I'll keep watch. Karen offered. At first Sakura wanted to protest since this girl was a stranger to her, but she was too tired to put up any resistance and simply nodded as she drifted off to sleep, having sweet dreams of yummy food. Time slowly ticked on as they took some time to rest and await Naruto's return with some food. Karen had to suppress a small laugh since she'd soon take an ironic form of revenge against the same bear that tried to devour her earlier. Even in the brief time she had known Naruto, he showed himself to be a kind and caring type of person and had readily accepted her. He was definitely an interesting person. Not to mention his chakra, Kami, it felt unnaturally warm and soothing, and there was just, so much of it. For a long time now, she had a theory that the measure of a person's chakra reserves may have an effect upon a person's physical development, mainly in terms of endowment. Breasts and asses for women, and penis size for men. She couldn't help but fantasize and wonder how big her new master was below the belt. Karen giggled perversely as her cheeks became a dark pink color but her fantasizing quickly came to a halt when she detected the presence of three unknown chakra signatures. Humans. Two males, one female. She adjusted her glasses and quietly waited. Time continued to move ever so slowly as she waited, it would seem that these people were watching them, and they didn't seem to be in any hurry to move on or find other prey. The crimson-haired girl narrowed her eyes and gently shook the pink head awake. Im. What is it? Food? The Haruno muttered sleepily as she woke up eager for something, anything to fill her stomach. Not quite, someone's watching us. Karen warned, whispering to the pinkhead while putting a finger to her lips to signal for her to be quiet. At this news, Sakura almost immediately woke up and stared at the spectacled girl, swallowing a dry lump in her throat as she scooched up closer to the redhead. Three people have been watching us for a while. They're up there in the trees. Karen spoke in a warning voice giving a subtle gesture towards the trees where their enemies were hiding. What are they waiting for? Sakura asked, if these people were going to attack, why not go ahead and do it already? Dunno. Probably just being cautious, unsure of what to expect from us. From their chakra, I'd say they're starting to get antsy. They'll probably make their move soon. Karen spoke, prompting Sakura to draw a kanai as they awaited their enemy to make the first move. They both exchanged a look and seemed to come to a shared conclusion that they could call Naruto for help, but this would obviously show the enemy that they were aware of their presence. That aside, Naruto should be back soon, so they just had to stall for a bit. At last, their watchers emerged from their hiding places and appeared a short distance away. Sakura immediately recognized them as the team from Otto, recalling how the mummy-like one took a swing at the Kabuto guy during the first stage of the exams. Oi! Bring out Sasuke Uchiha. We've got business with him. The mummy like Otto Nin spoke in a menacing voice. Even beneath the bandages he wore, it was easy to see that he was giving off a sadistic smile, same as the spiky haired guy. The girl, however, had a blank face as she twirled a senbon between her fingers. What's your beef with Sasuke? Karen asked with a snarl, her headband gleaming for a brief moment as it caught the Otto Nin's attention. The hell? What's Akusa Nin doing slumming with some Konoha Nin? The spiky haired Otto Nin asked in confusion with his compatriot humming in thought since he was kind of curious about that too. Didn't seem to make much sense for teams of other villages to team up. Too great a risk of village rivalries or backstabbing to warrant a potential alliance. Doesn't matter Zaku. 
Our objective hasn't changed. We're here to fight the Uchiha after all. If these girls want to get in our way, then so be it. We'll just plow right through them. The apparent leader of the auto team spoke as he pulled his sleeve back, revealing some kind of device on his arm. The one called Zaku smirked as he took on a fighting stance and spoke with a cruel smirk, yeah, whatever you say dosu. I can definitely work with that. The girls quickly stood up and adopted readied stances, ready to spring into action. Although in the case of Sakura, she wondered what sort of help she could possibly be, but she wasn't about to go down without a fight. The auto nin seemed ready to charge, until a familiar voice spoke from behind them, Yo, something we can help you with? The air suddenly became cold as a powerful killing intent flooded the area, sending shivers down the auto team's spines as they slowly turned around and were met with the form of Naruto, who seemed quite pissed off. Huh? Hey, Dosu? Isn't that the shrimpy loud kid that made that big speech during the first exam? He looks, way different. Zaku muttered as he felt himself sweating, and his hands suddenly started shaking though he couldn't understand why. Ah. He's definitely different from earlier. Probably was using a henge or something to hide his real appearance. Doesn't matter how he looks, he won't be able to. Dosu spoke until his voice fell silent at the last minute as he heard a crackling noise. He looked down a bit and saw electricity dancing between the blonde boy's fingers, then all of a sudden the whiskered teen vanished in a flash of yellow, much to the astonishment of everyone that saw it. Naruto then reappeared next to Zaku and kicked him square in the temple, snapping his neck upon impact and sending him flying away. Not sure what your business is with Sasuke, but I don't really care. What I do care about, is that you just threatened the girls. Now you're gonna have to die for that. Naruto spoke in a cold and detached voice as he vanished in another flash of yellow. Dosu stood still as he focused chakra to his ears, trying to predict where the boy would appear. He heard a small pop sound behind him, prompting him to turn around and find a hand gripping his face, then the sounds of electricity crackled loudly which was followed by a loud boom and a flash of light. When the dust settled, Naruto merely huffed in annoyance as he tossed aside Dosu's body which had been charred black. He looked down at his hands and flicked his fingers a few times, watching electricity dance between his fingertips. He wasn't sure exactly what kind of power he had unlocked, but damn did it feel good. He then turned towards the lone Kunoichi of the auto team and menacingly raised his hand in her direction as he summoned forth more small bolts of lightning that danced in his hand. In an instant, the black-haired girl threw her weapon away and dropped to her knees and shouted, Please, please don't kill me. I don't want to die. Naruto was taken aback by this, not expecting the girl to start begging for her life, he glanced over towards Sakura and Karen's direction and saw that they too were stunned, both by how easily he had slain the other two shinobi, and the girls begging. You don't want to die huh? says the girl that was about to attack my teammates. Naruto spoke as he marched towards the Ato Kunoichi, experimentally wiggling his fingers as small bolts of lightning continued to appear. No, no, no. I didn't have a choice, you don't know what it's like in auto. If you're not strong enough to protect yourself there, then you have to live with someone's boot on your neck. I was just following orders, if I didn't, then I'd be killed, or even worse. The girl spoke, her words causing Naruto to raise an eyebrow, then he took notice that her body appeared to be covered in a number of bruises, most of them seemed quite fresh. In all honesty, Naruto couldn't bring himself to do harm to someone that had no fighting spirit, not to mention it seemed a strange coincidence that after Sasuke was attacked by who could only have been Orochimaru that these auto nins suddenly showed up and came asking for the self-proclaimed, Avenger, by name. Before he could decide what to do about the girl, he heard her offering some kind of prayer. Koryu, please, I beg of you. Don't let me die. Please save me and spare my life. The raven-haired girl whispered just barely loud enough to hear. Oi, what's your name? Naruto questioned as he knelt down, the girl slowly lifted her head up to look at him, her eyes brimming with some tears as she replied, Kinsuchi, please, I'll do anything you want, just please don't kill me. I'm not a bad person. Really, I just want to live. Naruto thought for a few moments and then spoke. You said that you were just following orders and didn't have a choice. Sounds like your boss isn't a forgiving kind of person, think he'll spare you when he learns you and your team botched the job. At his question, Kin paled until she was white as a sheet and quickly shook her head, knowing that if this guy didn't kill her, then, he, would do worse than kill her. There was only one thing to do that might just give her a fighting chance. 
No, he won't, I know. Information? I have some information to trade. If you take me to your Hokage and give me protection, I'll tell you everything I know. Kin promised, her eyes filled with a mixture of desperation and hope. Poor thing looked absolutely terrified, and cutting her loose and sending her on her way would likely be a death sentence. Naruto sighed since it seemed he had no choice in the matter. Fine. Give me your hands. Naruto spoke, prompting the Ado Kunoichi to nod as she presented her hands, allowing Naruto to take some ninja wire and start tying her wrists behind her back and tying her index fingers and thumbs together to prevent her from using any jutsu. You can't be serious Naruto. We don't know this girl. She was going to attack us. You really think we can trust her? Sakura questioned with a snarl, prompting the blonde to shrug. We still don't know Karen all that well, but she's here with us anyway. Plus, I think we can trust that Kinsan wants to stay alive. Now then Kinsan, we'll take you to the Hokage and you can share what you know with him, you try anything and, you can guess the rest. Naruto spoke, directing the last part to the auto girl who quickly nodded in understanding. I got it. I got it. Kin muttered with an exhausted sigh, feeling relieved that she wouldn't be joining those two assholes in the ground. You hungry Kin? We were about to have dinner before you guys showed up. Naruto spoke, gesturing to a group of clones who emerged from the bush, bringing forth varying cuts of cooked meat to the girls. Both Karen and Sakura seemed ready to burst into tears at the sight of food, with their new prisoner's stomach joining the chorus of grumbling stomachs. You're going to feed me? Kin asked warily. While she was glad that this guy spared her for now, she doubted that he would show her any real kindness, nobody did, except maybe one person. I know how it feels to be hungry, I wouldn't wish for anyone to starve to death. Naruto spoke as his clones began passing around various portions to the girls, while another clone stepped up to feed the Ado Kunoichi due to her hands being bound and another left a portion for Sasuke to the side whenever he came around. Names Naruto Uzumaki. That's Sakura and Karen and the snoozing guy is Sasuke, your target. So, why were you after him? Naruto questioned after introducing himself and the others while taking a large bite of cooked bear meat. He had to admit, he had never had bear before, this was definitely a new experience. Can't tell you if I wanted to. We were told to fight Sasuke, so that's what we were gonna do. It's not healthy to ask too many questions in auto, you see. Kin replied as she snapped up some offered meat while the other girls chewed noisily. Sounds like Otto isn't a nice place to live at all. Saw the bruises on you, didn't see anything on your teammates, were they abusing you? Naruto questioned, which caused Kin to tense up but then nod in confirmation as she chewed on a large bite. That's awful, no one deserves to be treated like that. Sakura muttered angrily, while Karen nodded in agreement as she picked at some of her food. I was treated kinda like that in Kusa. I know how it feels. Goes to show, not all shinobi treat their comrades the same way. The spectacled girl angrily spat while cramming another bite into her mouth as she started to chew away at some of her frustration. Naruto glanced at Karen's arms and noticed what appeared to be a multitude of bite marks. He guessed that must have had something to do with her prior treatment, but he decided not to question it at this time. Hey Kin, who were you praying to before? This, Koryu. Naruto questioned out of simple curiosity, he had never heard of a deity by that name before. Kin chewed on another bite of meat for a few moments before swallowing and answering, a buddy of mine once told me a little bit of the story, it's said that Koryu is a divine being that can make miracles happen and bring happiness and salvation to those who suffer from abuse and oppression. There was more to it, but she never told me how the whole thing went. I guess I was so desperate that I started praying to some deity that doesn't even exist, silly desperation I guess. Huh, I think I might like to hear the whole story some time. At any rate, so long as you behave, you'll be fine. Naruto replied, prompting Kin to nod in understanding as she continued indulging in her meal. Hey Naruto, what you did before, with the lightning and that yellow flash thing, how'd you do all that? Sakura asked since it sounded fairly similar to the stories she had heard about the Yandaimi and his signature technique, the Hiraishin. No idea, it all just happened felt almost like instinct to me. Gotta say though, it felt incredible. The whiskered teen spoke as he snapped his fingers, making some sparks appear once more. Wait, seriously? That was all just from instinct? If that's the case, it'd be terrifying to see what he could do once he got some proper practice in. Right, we still have a problem though. 
That pale guy took our scroll, if we're to have any chance to pass this exam, we're gonna need to find a heaven and earth scroll. Sakura spoke in a somewhat discouraged voice which seemed to catch the attention of Karen. Oh, right. You mentioned that you lost your scroll, here, you can have mine. Karen spoke as she reached into her pack and pulled out a heaven scroll, causing everyone to stare at her wide-eyed. Naruto, she had that the whole time? Sakura asked as she accepted the scroll from the redhead with an astonished expression. I had no idea. I never thought to ask about that. One scroll is definitely better than none. Now we need to find an earth scroll and we're golden. Naruto spoke since this seemed to be a display of potentially good tidings. Kin then cleared her throat and piped in, if you need an earth scroll, my team had one. Dosu has it, she then tilted her head and gestured towards the bodies of her teammates, causing the other's eyes to widen even further, could it really be this easy? Could they really be this lucky? Which one was Dosu again? The whiskered teen asked as he got up and ventured outside to collect the scroll. Kin then answered his question. The one you fried extra crispy. The mummy guy. The Jinchuriki nodded in thanks as he searched Dosu's corpse and successfully found the earth scroll they needed, which was completely undamaged. Huh. Not a mark on it, not even singe. Talk about luck. What was that you said earlier? Koryu can make miracles happen. Not sure if he's for real, but if he is, I say he's decided to look after us. The blonde spoke as he held up the earth scroll triumphantly with a broad grin. Holy shit, we can just pack up and make a beeline straight for the tower and move on. Sakura spoke with a smile, very eager to get out of this forest and onto the next stage, not to mention if they get to the tower then they could report everything that happened to the Hokage and get Sasuke some proper treatment. Sounds good to me, the sooner we're to the tower, the better. Karen, we'll leave it to you to guide us around any danger. The blonde Uzumaki spoke in agreement, since it wouldn't be wise to linger in these woods for too long. Hey, guys? There's something weird going on with this Sasuke guy. Karen spoke and pointed a shaky hand towards the Uchiha. The others looked to her as if to ask, What's wrong? Prompting the spectacled girl to continue speaking. That mark on his neck, it's pumping some kind of weird chakra into him. It feels all dark and twisted and just wrong. We really ought to get him treated. I'd hate to see the nasty stuff that chakra might be doing to his body. As if we needed any more reason to get the hell out of here. Naruto spoke as he created a fresh group of clones which then proceeded to pick up the girls and the unconscious body of Sasuke. Once everyone was ready for transport, Naruto and his clones began to run with all speed towards the forest tower. Meanwhile, in Kiri. How bad was the damage? Spoke a female figure who was overlooking the damage that had been done to Kiri as numerous shinobi began escorting other captured shinobi around or assisting civilians in need of help. Not as bad as we expected. Most of the damage from that freak lightning storm was concentrated around the Mizukage's headquarters. The man himself was crushed to death by the debris before anyone actually knew what was happening. A man with an eye patch spoke as he assisted in directing their forces. The woman, known as Mei Terumi, nodded as she gave a heartfelt smile. For some time now, she and her rebels had fought long and hard to end the bloodline purge and restore peace to Kiri. The Mizukage was holed up and entrenched in his headquarters and his men were dug in deep, it would have taken tremendous amounts of effort and sacrifice to finally break them, but then the lightning came and killed almost everyone inside. What few guards remained were too shell-shocked to even put up a fight. This was nothing short of a true-to-life miracle. Now, they could take steps in rebuilding their village and restoring order, in fact, the people were wasting no time at all in preparing for her coronation ceremony to name her as the Godem Mizukage. A title that made Mei feel quite humbled since it meant that people would be counting on her to guide their village to a peaceful and prosperous future. You know Ao San, this reminds me of what that man once said, Ishikawa, he said that Korayu's will would someday remerge and bring about retribution to the evils of this world. Mei noted aloud as she crossed her arms beneath her bust, her words earning a raised eyebrow from Ao. The final words of a thief before his execution, still. I admit that this incident does have divine retribution written all over it. To think that lightning storm just appeared out of nowhere. Ah, well, it doesn't matter really. We still won in the end. Ao spoke with a slight smile, feeling satisfied with their hard won victory. Maybe, but it still feels like there's more to it. Ah, well, there are more important things to worry about. After my coronation, we make for Konoha. 
I'm sure they'll be open to giving us relief aid in exchange for an alliance. May spoke with a small smile, once again showing off her leadership skills and determination to lead her village. A new chapter for Kiri, and perhaps the Shinobi Nations was about to begin. And at the center of it all, one young Genin was about to alter the entire course of fate. Wow, I can't believe we got here so quickly, spoke the form of Sakura as she and the others now stood in front of the forest tower. Major props to Naruto and his clones for carrying them here so quickly and to Karen for helping them avoid other shinobi teams. The pinkhead was looking forward to the possibility of a hot shower after this. Phew, at least this leg of the exam is finally coming to a close for us. We should head inside now. Naruto spoke up as he dispelled his clones, save for one that was currently carrying the still unconscious form of Sasuke over its shoulder. The girls all nodded in agreement as the blonde ushered them all inside. When they stepped inside, they were greeted by what appeared to be an empty lobby, which seemed a little strange since one would expect a watchman or someone to be on duty to receive them or any other teams. Huh, no one here. Kin pointed out as she obediently followed behind her blonde captor, her words earning a small glare from the Haruno. Gee, thanks for pointing out the obvious, now what the hell are we supposed to do? I am so over this crap. Sakura muttered in frustration, which was understandable since everyone else was feeling equally annoyed by this exam. Maybe we're supposed to do something with the scrolls now? Naruto asked as he gestured towards the set of scrolls in his pack, earning some thoughtful looks from the girls. You sure about that? Rules said we're not supposed to open them. Kin pointed out, earning a negative shake of the head from Naruto as he wagged a lone finger from side to side. Nah. The rules stated that we can't open them before we get to the tower. They never said anything about it once we were inside. Maybe the scrolls act as some kind of a key when we arrive. The whiskered teen pointed out, which caused the girls to gain thoughtful looks before nodding in agreement since it seemed they were out of any other options. Sakura took the heaven and earth scrolls and proceeded to unfurl them, but was stopped when the loud bang of a door being slammed open caused them all to nearly jump out of their skin as a purple blur crashed into Naruto before he even had a chance to react. Naruto you shitty little bastard! Screeched a female voice as a woman was now straddling the blonde on the floor. Oh! Hi Anko-chan! Nice to see you again! Naruto casually greeted when he saw the form of the current exam proctor was straddling his waist and she seemed super pissed off with tear-filled eyes as she suddenly began slapping him across the face. Shut up you bastard. I hate you. You deserve to go to hell. Do you have any idea how worried I was about you? Anko shouted angrily in between slaps while the girls in the background watched on with stupefied expressions since they were unsure if they should interfere or let this play out. Uh. Naruto? Are you friends with her or something? Sakura asked since that was the only intelligent question that came to mind at the moment. Then again, the two seemed quite similar in personality so it shouldn't be that surprising if they're friends. Naruto glanced over in the pinkette's direction while showing almost no reaction to the barrage of stinging slaps to his face, even as his cheeks became red with a multitude of hand-shaped markings that started to appear. Huh? Oh yeah, me and Enko go Wally back. We've been best friends for as long as I can remember. Don't worry, this is pretty normal. She did this when I got back from Wave Country too. She won't admit it, but she's a worrier. Shut the fuck up you little shit. I hate you. Enko shouted once more as she slapped him across the face once again then continued to shout. I almost had a goddamn heart attack when those quakes happened, and then I have to worry about you being in constant danger and, the purple haired woman continued to rant angrily. You need some help there Naruto? Karen asked as she tilted her head to the side, in response Naruto looked over to her and answered, No. Nah. It's fine, just let her vent and she'll be okay. After a few more seconds of the exam proctor slapping the hell out of the blonde, she let out a small sigh of relief and gave him a cheeky grin. There. I'm all good now, sorry about that Naruto. But seriously, you have no idea how fucking worried I was about you, now how the hell did you get fucking yoked and what's the deal with the extras? The dango lover asked while pointing towards Karen and Kin with one hand and using the other to feel up Naruto's abs. The Jinchuriki sighed as he explained, Well, I unlocked some kind of a bloodline when a snake tried to eat me, then I rescued Karen the girl with glasses from being eaten by a bear, and I kinda took Kin prisoner after her team tried to attack us, she agreed to trade information in exchange for protection. Also, there's something else, 
The whiskered teen then whispered quietly into Anko's ear as she listened tentatively, then her eyes widened as a look of horror appeared on her face, which then quickly morphed into anger as she mouthed, son of a bitch. I see, well, congrats to team 7 for passing the exams. Come with me please. The purplette spoke as she snatched the scrolls up and gestured for them to follow her to their next destination. At the very least, they could say that the exam was now officially over. Sakura suddenly remembered that they needed to speak to the Hokage and piped, Wait a sec Anko-san, we need to make a report to the Hokage. Sasuke was bitten by some creepy guy and, she tried to explain but was cut off by the proctor. Yeah, I got the gist from Naruto-kun. As a matter of fact, that, creepy guy, you mentioned, I tried tracking him down but he already slipped the net. Hokage-sama will explain more. The dango lover mentioned, her words earning a blow to the ribs from Naruto as he glared angrily at Anko. You tried to find him? Are you nuts? He could have killed you? Naruto growled out, which caused Anko to slump her shoulders and mutter, yeah. Stupid mistake. At this, Sakura raised an eyebrow and noted that it appeared as if Naruto knew what was going on, though she decided to wait until the Hokage came to see them before asking about that sort of thing. Instead Sakura decided to ask something else to take their minds off their current situation at least for a moment. So, did any other teams make it here? Anko glanced over her shoulder towards the Haruno and then replied, Yeah. The Suna team got here a long while before you guys showed up. Here's the thing though, they didn't have a single scratch on them. You'd better watch out if you ever have to tangle with those guys. Naruto hummed in thought at this news, out of the three in the Suna team. That Gara person was undoubtedly the most dangerous of the lot. Even his own teammates, his own siblings, were scared of him. If he ever crossed paths with Gara again, he'd definitely have to be on his guard. Thanks for the heads up, Anko chan, by the way, were you waiting for me? Couldn't help but notice how quick on the draw you were when we arrived. Naruto spoke in a teasing voice, prompting the snake user to playfully flip him the bird with a flirty wink. Huh, never would have figured you guys were friends. Then again, that thing you did at the gates, Kin muttered as she remembered seeing the proctor cut Naruto's cheek with a kanai and then licked up some of the blood. Oh that? That was just classic Anko screwing with me. The blonde casually explained as he rubbed the back of his head, causing the other girls to sweat drop at his and the purplet's odd relationship. Well, if it worked for them, then that was their business of course. At last, Anko guided the group to what appeared to be some kind of a guest wing with rooms large enough to accommodate any shinobi teams that arrived. She then opened a room for them and ushered them all inside, revealing three beds, a closet with extra futons, a bathroom, a television and so on. Overall, the place looked almost like a luxury suite. You guys can sleep and rest here till the next stage of the exams. The Hokage will come to see you as soon as he is able, you need anything, give me a holler. I'll be right down the hall. Anko explained, earning some nods from Naruto and his companions. Mind doing me a solid and getting me a change of clothes, Anko chan? These pants are really digging into some very uncomfortable places and it's driving me nuts. Naruto requested, prompting the snake user to look down and smirk a bit since it was true, on a more serious note, the fabric almost looked ready to split apart at any time. Yeah, he definitely needed a fresh set. Anko gave a quick, you got it, before departing, leaving the blonde and his party to their own devices. Uh. Finally, it's over. Sakura muttered as she flopped onto one of the nearby beds, glad to feel the soft fabric and mattress of a bed. A very welcome sight indeed after the trials they endured in the forest. Karen sighed as she removed her kusa headband and placed it to the side since she no longer needed it, she had no intentions of ever returning there, not to mention she was now bound to Naruto's service. Overall, a definite improvement over her previous situation. In the background, Naruto was busy cutting Kin loose from her bonds, freeing her from the ninja wire that previously bound her wrists and fingers. There. That should be more comfortable for ya. Naruto spoke with a small smile, the action earning an appreciative nod from the raven-haired girl. She was in deep already, and she knew that there was nowhere for her to run. Staying with these guys and getting protection from a major village was the only chance she had at survival and so far this Naruto guy had been treating her with decency and kindness. Uh. Thanks. She muttered in appreciation while rubbing her wrists and flexing her fingers to help loosen them up. Naruto then sighed as he glanced towards the bathroom door and took a moment to smell himself, 
he almost regretted it since he still reeked of snake guts and who knows what else. Yo. I'm gonna take a shower. Anyone need to use the toilet or something before I head in there? He questioned, earning a collective, nope, from the other girls since they were all fine for the time being. With that, the blonde Uzumaki ducked into the restroom so that he could shower in peace and remove the stench from his body. The sounds of a shower running could be heard, Karen briefly wondered what her blonde master looked like without his pants, but quickly shook those naughty thoughts aside so that she could let him wash himself in peace. He deserved a break since he helped get them here to begin with. Naruto sure is strong and reliable isn't he? The spectacled asked the pinkhead while cleaning her glasses for a moment. Sakura pursed her lips for a second then replied, he wasn't always like that, back in the academy we always made fun of him for being a weakling and a screw up, the teachers started calling him the dead last, and the name kinda stuck. However, once he became a shinobi, he's gotten a lot stronger and has become more and more reliable. It's quite a shocking change, really. Karen hummed in thought as she replaced her glasses then pushed them up a bit with her middle finger before speaking, everyone develops differently under different circumstances, from the sounds of it, your academy wasn't the right environment for him to grow. Some people just need a fair chance to prove themselves. Sakura nodded at the redhead's words and then glanced over at Sasuke who was sound asleep on one of the other beds, his face seemed calmer and more at peace now and he was no longer mumbling creepy stuff in his sleep, suggesting that the worst of whatever he was going through had probably passed. Still, what Karen said earlier about that dark chakra in his body was quite concerning. Hopefully there was some form of treatment that could help him. So Kin, what do you plan to do once you're safe? You gonna join us? Sakura asked since the most prudent choice for the Otto Kunoichi would be to join up with Konoha so she would continue to be safe from harm. Dunno, back in Otto. The only thing on your mind is survival and making it to live through the next day, and the next day, and the next day. Never really had a chance to sit down and seriously think about the future and what I want to do, maybe I can get that chance here. The raven haired girl replied as she turned on the television and started watching a movie from the highly popular Princess Gale series. Wow, that brought back some nostalgia for the pinkette. She remembered meeting the actress herself who was actually a fallen daimyo and how she and Team 7 liberated Snow Country and putting her back on her throne. Those were definitely exciting times. The last she heard, the film was still being edited and prepped for public release, but some footage of Team 7's battles were gonna be added into it, that would definitely be interesting to see, especially when Naruto delivered the final blow to that dodo guy. Her musing was broken when she heard Sasuke moaning, and looked over in his direction. She saw that he was lifting a hand to his head, signaling that he was coming around at long last. Easy Sasuke. You're okay. We're all safe now. Sakura spoke soothingly, then snapped her fingers and quickly went to fetch some water for the Uchiha since there was no doubt that he'd be thirsty. Fortunately there were some bottles of water in a nearby mini fridge. The Uchiha opened his eyes and found himself in unfamiliar surroundings, the only sight that he recognized being the form of Sakura fawning over him as she quickly popped open a water bottle for him but at the moment he was too thirsty to protest. He took the offered water and began to quickly gulp it down to quench his parched throat, he then let out a relieved sigh as he felt the cool liquid flow down his gullet then asked in a rapid fire manner, where are we? What happened? Did we fail? Who are those other girls? Sakura sighed as she spoke in a calm manner, we're at the forest tower, those two are Karen and Kin, Naruto helped get us here when he came back to find us. Don't worry though, we passed the exam and are going to move on to the next stage. At this news, the Uchiha was silent for a few moments as he quietly absorbed this news. Naruto, got us through? Sasuke asked with a raised eyebrow, wondering how someone as worthless as the Dobi could have helped them pass the exam. Yeah, Naruto really pulled his weight out there when he came back, he also unlocked some kind of bloodline or something, and he made some new friends too. Sakura explained while gesturing to the other girls. Kin scoffed a bit with a small smirk and replied, Friends is a bit much in my case. I'm technically a prisoner. Her words earned a small scoff from the pinkette since that was true, she'd almost forgotten about that since the raven haired girl had been so cooperative and obedient. A bloodline? The dobi? This is ridiculous. Sasuke muttered as he balled his free hand into a fist and let out a small snarl feeling frustrated at his own powerlessness, which had been earlier demonstrated by his earlier fight with that stranger that had attacked him. It was clear to him that he needed to get stronger, 
and soon if he were to ever kill Itachi. At the rate he was going at this time, that goal seemed ever farther away than ever. Not sure what it is or what it can do, but yeah, whatever it is, it's powerful. Sakura answered with a small smile, grateful for Naruto's aid since he had really pulled through for Team 7. In fact, if it weren't for him, then it's likely they would have completely failed the exam. All of a sudden, the bathroom door opened and Naruto walked out, wearing a white bathrobe. Yo, look who's awake. Naruto spoke as he used a hand towel to help dry off his hair, taking note that the Uchiha had finally returned to the land of the living. The hell? That you Dobi? Sasuke asked in surprise at the sight of the blonde's new and more muscular body, a strong feeling of inadequacy overcoming the Uchiha since the whiskered teen seemed much more powerful than before as opposed to his previous scrawny appearance. The one and only. Showers free for anyone that wants to use it. There's plenty of bathrobes for everyone as well. Naruto spoke as he gestured towards the now open bathroom. Sakura immediately accepted the invitation as she called dibs and zipped past the jinchuriki in order to take a hot shower. The Uchiha stared at Naruto for a few moments before giving a dismissive scoff and turned away to stare at the wall and quietly brood. The hell is that prick's problem? Karen asked as she adjusted her glasses with a small glare. That Sasuke guy seemed like a rude and overall unpleasant kind of character from what she could see. Just Sasuke being Sasuke. Best to ignore him if he gets on your nerves. Ooh, Princess Gale. I wonder how Koyuki san is doing. Naruto spoke that last part out upon noticing the movie playing on the television screen, which earned the attention of both his new companions. Hold up a sec, you personally know her? Kin asked since it was quite a shock to the movie world when it was revealed the famed actress was actually a daimyo in disguise, and had only recently begun going by her real name. Oh yeah, me and my team were hired to guard her. Of course we didn't know she was a daimyo at the time. She at first was kinda gloomy and stuff, but she really came out of her shell later. I like to think that we even became friends. Kinda wish I had that autographed picture she gave me so I could show it to you. He explained with a broad grin causing both girls' jaws to drop open. Are you serious? What other kinds of adventures have you been on? Karen asked as she planted herself next to Kin, the both of them very eager to listen to any stories the whiskered teen had to share. Naruto smirked as he decided to oblige them since they had some time to kill, so he began to regale them with some of the missions he and Team 7 had been on, unknown to him. The friends and allies he had unknowingly cultivated over the course of his adventures were about to bear fruit. Meanwhile, Hokage office. Good grief. I never would have imagined this happening, at least not so quickly. Hiruzen muttered to himself as he looked at an urgent message straight from Kiri. It appeared that the new Godem Mizukage had been crowned and was going to soon pay a visit to Konoha to negotiate relief aid for her village. Given the currently weakened state of Kiri due to their civil war, it made sense that they would need the help and a strong ally. Building a good and strong alliance with other nations would also be a good step in establishing peace. From what Hiruzen had heard, this Meitarumi was a strong, charismatic, and competent leader that had seen the rebel faction through thick and thin, and was often credited for their many victories and achievements over the long civil war. She was, by all accounts, a complete shoe in to become Mizukage. He had to admit, he was looking forward to meeting her in person. His musing was cut short when a knock came at his door prompting the Sandame to call out, Yes, come in. At his signal, his trusted Anbu captain and bodyguard Nako escorted in several dignitaries that he had been expecting today. Some old friends of Naruto's actually. From Wave Country, the newly elected and reluctantly crowned Daimyo, Tizuna. From the newly dubbed Spring Country, world-renowned movie star and beloved Daimyo of Spring, Koyuki Kazahana. From Taki, the leader of the village Shibuki and his bodyguard Fu each representative and leader of their respective homes, each owing to Team 7, and more specifically to Naruto Uzumaki, an enormous debt of gratitude both of a personal nature and from their respective homes. Welcome, all of you. Welcome to Konoha. I admit, I haven't greeted so many dignitaries and leaders at once in some time. Hiruzen spoke with a small chuckle, the others nodding in agreement since this was new territory for them just as well. Thanks. It still hasn't really sunk in that I was picked to be daimyo, but I'll sure as hell do my best to represent my country. If it weren't for Naruto and Team 7, Wave would still be under Gato's yoke of oppression. Tazuna spoke as he crossed his arms over his chest, 
then briefly scratched since the new daimyo robes he was wearing felt uncomfortable for him to wear. Indeed, my people would have suffered under Dodo's regime as well had Naruto not defeated him and restored hope to us and to me. Koyuki noted as a look of nostalgia washed over her face which she tried to hide behind a handheld fan. Ah. Same. If Naruto hadn't stepped in with his team, Taki would have been in great danger. He saved my village and helped me find my courage as well. Shibuki spoke as he recalled the blonde fearlessly fighting the Taki leader's former sensei in Mortal Kombat. After a few brief moments of silence, the bridge builder decided to speak up, well, if you guys don't mind, I'm not one for that pomp and circumstance crap. I'd rather get straight to business. The others chuckled at that, though they all nodded in agreement since that would certainly move things along, that aside, they didn't really like standing on ceremony if it could be avoided. Koyuki giggled and spoke, hi, I agree with Tazuna Dono. I'd also like to move things along. I'll start first by offering some of Spring Country's technology. We have recently finished some equipment that can aid in the healthcare of people in local hospitals, I'm sure it will be beneficial in taking the burden off your doctors and medic nin. At that, Hiruzen almost felt his heart stop inside his chest since Snow Country, now named Spring Country was quite famous for their advanced technology and inventions, and they guarded their secrets quite jealously. To be given such a gift was utterly priceless especially if this technology improved the quality of healthcare in Konoha's hospitals. Tazuna cleared his throat and proceeded to go next. Wave Country has quickly become a wealthy trading hub thanks to my bridge and the goods that our ports are bringing in since Gato's death. We want to offer Konoha a trade agreement to boost trade in your coffers. Also, we want to give Konoha an exclusive contract to protect Wave's interests. With all the trade and merchants flooding the place, it's bound to attract the attention of unsavory characters. Both the people of Wave and the merchants would be very grateful for Konoha's protection and will be happy to compensate accordingly. Again, Hiruzen felt his heart almost stop beating as he nearly fell out of his seat. A trade agreement and contract for protection with a big trading hub like Wave could secure Konoha's finances for many years to come. In many ways, Konoha was still suffering some financial difficulties after the damage sustained during the Kyubi's rampage on that fateful night. Shibuki then chuckled nervously as he rubbed the back of his head and then spoke, I was having a hard time deciding what to offer Konoha since the sacred water of my village has the side effect of cutting down a person's lifespan, so then I decided, with Fu's permission, to offer her to Konoha on condition that she be assigned to Team 7. Hum? Fu-san? Here is an question with a raised eyebrow, prompting the tacky leader to nod and reply. Hi. That's correct. Fu is the Nanabi Jinchuriki. I assure you she is as powerful as she is capable. The sand dame then jaw dropped at this since it was quite rare for a ninja to transfer to a different village, and it was absolutely unheard of for a village to give their own jinchuriki away as a gift. Especially since they were some of the most powerful military assets in the shinobi nations, the kind of which that could completely tip the balance of power amongst the nations and on the battlefield itself when push came to shove. I, air, I am completely humbled and speechless with your unprecedented generosity my friends. I hope that we can work together to build a brighter future for our homes. Hiruzen spoke as he tried to maintain his composure, all the while fighting back some tears that were forming in his eyes. The dream of peace and harmony between the villages shared by the Hokages seemingly closer than ever before. Hey! Naruto showed us that we all gotta look out for each other. How is he doing anyway? I was kinda hoping to see the little brat. My grandson Inari asks about him a lot. Tazuna inquired with his fellow leaders nodding in agreement since they too were quite eager to see the blonde as well. The Hokage briefly wiped away some of the moisture building in his eyes and replied, He is currently participating in the Chunin exams, I am expecting to receive word that, the aged Sandame explained but was interrupted when a Chunin appeared next to him in a puff of smoke and then began whispering into Hiruzen's ear. Once he had finished relaying the news, the Chunin vanished as quickly as he had arrived. Ah, as luck would have it, Naruto kun and his team have just finished the second part of the Chunin exams. I'm afraid he and his team are currently resting at this time, but I'll be sure to inform him that you asked about him. Furthermore, I would be more than happy to invite you all back to Konoha to watch the Chunin exam finals, which are to be held a month from now. Hiruzen spoke, informing the dignitaries of the good news while maintaining his best poker face to keep from leaking out the bad news. Ha! Huh. Always bet on Naruto. 
Tazuna barked out with a bellowing laugh with the others voicing their own agreements. They all then thanked the Sandame for his hospitality and promised to return for the finals and expressed absolute confidence that Naruto would make it into the finals. Fu said her goodbyes to Shibuki then handed her headband over to him, and they then shared a friendly hug. Once the dignitaries had all left to make the return journey back home, the green-haired girl then turned her attention towards the Sandame and saluted him, Fu Nanabi, reporting for duty Hokage-sama. I look forward to personally meeting this Naruto person. Shibuki would not stop talking about him. The Sandame chuckled a bit as he replied, Naruto-kun has always had a way of leaving a strong impression on people. I'm sure you're gonna be a fine addition to our forces and to Team 7, also, I think it would make Naruto feel more comfortable to be around another of his kind. The brown-skinned girl raised an eyebrow for a brief moment, then it clicked in her mind when she realized that this Naruto must have been a Jinchuriki like herself. It would definitely be a first for her to meet a fellow biju container. Come to think of it, it would be really nice to speak to someone who bears a similar burden as herself. Now she was really looking forward to meeting him. Now then, come along Fusan, we should introduce you to the others. The sooner you meet and bond with them the better. Hiruzen spoke, not to mention there were also other things he had to take care of. Later. Forest Tower, Team 7's room. You're seriously not making up any of this crap? Kin asked out of curiosity after Naruto had finished telling him about his past adventures, honestly, a lot of that stuff was pretty unbelievable. I swear on my headband, all of it is absolutely true. Tell him Sasuke. Naruto called out towards the Uchiha with a grin. The self-proclaimed Avenger rolled his eyes in annoyance but gave an affirmative nod all the same since it all was indeed true. Sakura then emerged at long last from the shower, having overheard the blonde telling stories of their exploits she also said, Yup. All true. Holy crap. Was all Karen could say as she let out a low whistle. While it was known that absolutely anything could happen while on a mission, she would never have expected that kind of stuff could happen to a fresh out of the academy team as Naruto had described them in his stories, or perhaps more specifically, that kind of stuff could happen to them and that they managed to survive it all. Yeah, we went through some rough patches, but we always found a way to squeak through. Gotta say though, if I had unlocked this bloodline earlier, then things would have definitely been a lot easier. Naruto spoke with a small chuckle, making some sparks appear from his fingertips for emphasis. The door to their suite opened, revealing the form of Anko with a fresh set of clothes for the blonde as she announced, Yo! Got some good news for you guys, Hokage's on his way. Should be here soon. A few more teams made it too. Oh? Who made it? Naruto asked as he accepted the clothes from his best friend, the others listening in since they too were curious about who made it, even Sasuke though that was mainly because he was curious about who his next opponents might be. Well, all of your old classmates made it. A guy called Kabuto and his team made the cut too. Might Guy's team also arrived as well. By this point, we're not expecting any more teams. All the others have either been confirmed killed or disqualified. Anko explained with a slightly sadistic smile, causing the girls to shudder a bit. Hey Sasuke, didn't that Rock Lee fella kick your ass just before the first exam? Naruto asked with a cheeky grin, although deep down he knew that the Uchiha would likely wish to settle the score. If there was one thing that he and Sasuke did have in common, aside from tragic backstories, was their shared hatred of losing. Shut up Dobi. The Uchiha grumbled angrily, the whiskered teen then shrugged his shoulders and entered the bathroom to change his clothes. About a minute or so later, he returned wearing a black trench coat without a shirt underneath to expose his abs and chest, a pair of jeans and black combat boots. Whoa, I'm liking the new look. Karen spoke as she used her fingers to make a picture frame while ogling the blonde's new look, most especially his abs. Hubba hubba. I'll be your captive any day. Kin blurted out without thinking then slapped a hand over her mouth and blushed profusely in embarrassment. Even Sakura had to admit that this was a pretty good look for Naruto, a very strong improvement over his previous outfit, that was for sure. Thank you all for your kind input ladies. I gotta say, I'm looking forward to testing my new powers and skills on some new opponents. Those auto guys were pretty weak, no offense meant for you kin. Naruto proclaimed as he cracked his knuckles with Anko chuckling as she ruffled his hair. You'll get your shot, Naruto-kun. Word is we'll be having some prelims soon to help cull down some extra candidates. We'll be starting soon, so get some rest while you still can. 
The dango lover spoke in a grave voice, earning a nod from the whiskered teen. Wait, prelims? Cull down? Sakura parroted in a worried voice, making Enko smirk a bit as she answered. Relax Pinkie Pie. It's actually pretty straightforward. One-on-one -on -one matches. All you have to do is worry about beating your opponent. Nothing to it. At this news, Sakura let out a sigh of relief since a simple straight-up fight would definitely be much more preferable over another survival exercise like before. With that the snake user departed since she had some other exam-related business to take care of before the prelims took place. Huh, to think we came so far now. E.H. Sakura? Naruto asked as he started performing a few stretches and admired the freedom of movement in his new outfit. The pinkette smiled as she nodded in agreement and replied, Yeah, think we have a shot in making chunin? Karen giggled as she adjusted her glasses and piped in. It's not really a guarantee but everyone has a fair shot at making the grade. Who knows? All of you could become Chunin. Maybe none of you will. Anything can happen. But at least you'll have given it your best shot. Even if you don't make it, there will always be next time, and next time you'll be much better prepared, yeah? Naruto nodded as he spoke. Karen's right. Regardless of if we pass or fail, we'll still be Team 7. Sakura, we've had some rough spots, but I was still glad to be a part of the team. It was still a learning experience for me. At that, the pinkette smiled and was amazed at how sporting and mature the blonde was being. He had seriously grown as both a ninja and perhaps more importantly as a person. HMPH. Speak for yourselves. If you two weren't around, Kakashi would be able to dedicate more time to me and help me get even stronger, but you were both holding me back. Sasuke spoke with a grimace, his words earning frowns from everyone in the room. What did you just say, Dobi? What was that about my mother? Sasuke demanded since he had clearly heard Naruto mention his late mother by name. The two boys glared harshly at one another for a few long moments, the atmosphere becoming more and more tense by the second, which was then broken when a knock came at the door. Karen? Can you check on that please? Naruto requested, prompting the spectacled girl to give a quick, hi, and walk over to the door to answer it where a voice that was very familiar to Team 7 greeted her. Oh heyo. My apologies for disturbing you, young lady. I'm currently looking for Team 7, am I at the wrong room? Asked the form of Hiruzen in a kindly and polite voice. Karen shook her head and gestured inside, revealing that Team 7 were indeed occupying this room which prompted Hiruzen to give a thank you to her as he stepped inside, while being accompanied by a girl with green hair and brown skin that the Konoha Genin didn't recognize. Hey old man. Good to see you again. Thanks for coming. Naruto greeted in a friendly manner while waving towards the Sandane. Hiruzen visibly blanched for a few moments before shouting, Naruto? Is that you? I almost didn't recognize you. You're, 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 much more. The whiskered teen chuckled as he cut off the Sandane and spoke, Yeah, I know. I'm not a scrawny little pipsqueak anymore. I get it. Bloodline helped beef me up. Not sure how, why, or what it can do, but I hope to find out. Anyway. We have more important business than discussing my new bod. The blonde then flexed his arm for a brief moment and then put his hands in his coat pockets while motioning towards the two extra girls he had picked up and towards Sasuke. Hum. Ah, uh, yes, of course, I almost forgot. I must be getting a little senile. Right. The girls. I have already been told the basics thanks to the messenger Enko sent me. For this Karen girl, the matter is fairly simple. We can simply declare her as legally dead since her team didn't make it in the forest. Since she swore life debt to you Naruto-kun, what you do with her is entirely your business. As for you Kin-san, I'm aware that you wish to trade information in exchange for asylum here in Konoha. I'll have Anko-san take you to the T&I department for questioning. So long as you cooperate and share what you know, you'll be safe from harm, I promise you. You'll be in good hands. The Sandame promised earning a thankful nod from the raven-haired girl. Unlike in Otto, the people of Konoha, or at least most of them, had a code of honor. So long as she didn't give them reason to harm her, she should be fine. The Sandame then directed his attention towards the Uchiha with a grave expression and spoke in an even voice, Sasuke, Sakura. The one you encountered in the forest, was my former student Orochimaru, the snake Sanin. He murdered and took the place of Akusa Nin to infiltrate the exams. At this news, Naruto narrowed his eyes while Karen adjusted her glasses, 
Kin for her part bit her lip while looking a little green in the face, she wanted to say something, but she feared that if she said something now, then she would have lost her only bargaining chip that could save her life. Sakura paled at the thought of having encountered one of the most dangerous shinobi alive, while Sasuke seemed as pensive and brooding as ever, though it seems his pride was bruised a bit less after having learned he had lost to a powerful shinobi instead of some nameless scrub, for all the good it did him. Orochimaru. But, what would he want with us? Sakura asked since it didn't make much sense for her that a Sanin, a rogue one at that, would target a team of genin like themselves. Not us. Just Sasuke. He's been marked. Naruto answered as he gestured towards the Uchiha, with Hiruzen nodding in confirmation. The sand dame cleared his throat and began his explanation. Orochimaru was caught performing inhumane experiments here in Konoha. He was trying to uncover the secrets of immortality and of any and all bloodlines that caught his attention. He had a particular obsession with both the Senju's wood release and Uchiha's Sharingan. That mark that Sasuke now bears on his neck is Orochimaru's solution. The Sandame spat out in disgust at the word solution. Naruto sighed as he stepped forward and took over for the Hokage. Orochimaru made what is known as the curse mark that he brands certain individuals with. Anko, his former student, has a mark just like Sasuke's, though hers was still in the prototype stages. From what I was told about it, the mark acts as both a drug and as a parasite. He uses it to transfer his soul into the body of someone he marked, so that he can take it over and assimilate their bloodlines or any other qualities and abilities for himself. That's, that's horrible, and disgusting. Then that means, Sakura muttered but quickly lost the use of her voice as she glanced over towards her other teammate. Yeah, he wants Sasuke's Sharingan. Sorry I didn't say anything earlier, but I didn't want to worry anyone, at least not until we cleared out of the forest. Naruto explained as he crossed his arms, earning a nod of understanding from the pinket. As this went on, Sasuke quietly brooded to himself, making it difficult to discern how much he actually heard, or if he was even listening at all. Sakura then managed to regain her voice and asked, Hokage-sama, is there anything you can do? There must be a way to remove it, right? The Sandame sighed as he answered her in a grave voice, I'm afraid no reliable method has been found to dispel a curse mark as of yet. They're tricky little things. Even worse, the sealing arts are extremely complex and there are few true seal masters. If we had Orochimaru's formula for the mark, that would make things significantly easier, but without that we run the risk of doing more harm than good. The best we can do for now, is to put an inhibitor on it to suppress the effects. Sakura nodded in thanks since that was better than doing nothing at all, but then Sasuke finally spoke up, this mark, could it perhaps, be useful? At his question, Everyone looked at him as though he had grown a second head, while the Sandame narrowed his eyes, that sort of question didn't bode well at all. Sasuke. Listen to me very carefully. It is true that the curse mark may afford some benefits, but they are far too costly. As Naruto correctly put it, the mark is akin to a drug. If you use it, it may give you some measure of strength, but the more you use it, the more addicted you become, the more addicted you become, the more dependent on it you become until finally it ends up destroying you body and soul. I expressly forbid you from using the mark for your own health and safety. Additionally, I should mention that those who rely on fake power, don't get very far in life or the shinobi world. If you are caught trying to use that mark for your own benefit, I will not hesitate to have your chakra sealed and have you placed into protective custody, or even prison if you force my hand. Is that clear? The Hokage almost snarled at the end showing off an almost uncharacteristic show of contempt and anger. For a moment, the Uchiha grit his teeth, almost as if he wanted to say something, but instead he grudgingly shook his head which seemed to satisfy the Sandame for the time being. Very good. Now then, the preliminaries will begin shortly, Team 7, report to the arena. Karen San, Kin San, feel free to use the television to watch the matches and cheer for your new friends. Hiruzen spoke earning some nods from everyone. Then the green haired girl cleared her throat rather loudly, gaining the attention of the Sandame. Ah, oh, I almost forgot, forgive me, Fu San. Team 7, this is Fu, she will be joining you as an official member of your squad after the Chunin exams. She has recently transferred from Taki, so please treat her well. Hiruzen spoke, introducing the brown skinned girl who gave a friendly wave. Naruto smiled and decided to break the ice by saying, Nice to meet you, Fu San. I'm Naruto Uzumaki, 
I don't remember seeing you in Taki when we were last there. How's Shibuki doing by the way? Fu giggled as she rubbed the back of her head and answered. Yeah, I was off on a mission during that time so I didn't hear about what happened until I got home. Shibuki-san's doing just fine, in fact he sends his warmest regards to Team 7 and to you Naruto-san. I look forward to working with you guys in the future. Sakura gave a friendly wave as well to the mint-haired Kunoichi and spoke, it'll be nice to have you on the team. I am Sakura Haruno, not to sound like I'm complaining of anything, but it seems unusual for a team to have more than the usual members. Standard team dynamics usually consist of three students and one sensei, not to mention we're in the Chunin exams Sue, won't our team get broken up or something? Hiruzen chuckled and decided to step in and answer, not necessarily, no. Most Chunin who work in teams tend to work with their original teammates due to existing familiarity and teamwork, however they can also choose to do certain missions solo or with other team members. Even if you become Chunin, Team 7 won't be broken up, also, I grant that these are unusual circumstances, but some teams are granted special rights or exceptions, such as Fu joining you squad for instance, perhaps even Karen-san may join you if she so wishes, given her life dead to Naruto-kun. Sakura nodded in understanding while the spectacled girl gave a nonchalant shrug. She wasn't really interested in becoming a kunoichi for Konoha, she was just fine being an unofficial member that was there to serve Naruto and assist him with anything he needed. Fusan, as your first official mission of Konoha, I charge you with guarding Karen-san and Kin-san until either Naruto-kun or a woman named Anko Midarashi comes to retrieve them. Hiruzen stated, prompting the orange-eyed girl to stamp her feet in place and salute the sandame as if to say, leave it to me. Fu then glanced over to Naruto and said to him, I look forward to talking with you more Naruto-san, by the way, it might interest you to know that my lucky number on the totem pole is 7. At that, Naruto gave her a puzzled expression as if to ask, what do you mean? As if sensing his question, Fu gave him a wink and motion towards her stomach region, it then clicked in his mind that she was telling him that she was a Jinchuriki like himself, the Nanabi. Huh, the Nanabi Jinchuriki joining Team 7, lucky number indeed. Cool, mine is the number 9. I'm definitely looking forward to talking with you. Karen, Kin, you two behave yourselves and don't go causing trouble for our new friend. The blonde spoke, earning a pair of highs from the girls. We'll be cheering you on. Go knock em dead. Karen shouted as the blonde and his teammates exited the room, followed by the sandame. The three girls then turned their attention towards the television screen and used the remote to change the feed until they saw an arena where the other teams had gathered. It was certainly going to be interesting to see who was going to fight who in the coming matches, although, they were very strongly confident that Naruto himself would be the last one standing. The preliminaries of the Chunin exams were about to begin. Well now, this may be fun. Naruto whispered to himself as he and his team arrived within the arena where the other teams had gathered. Some looking a bit worse for wear judging by the scrapes, bruises and signs of fatigue. He glanced upwards and saw the Sandame and Anko watching silently from above and gave them a subtle nod, which they returned and mouthed, good luck, to the blonde. Standing at the front of the various teams was a rather sickly looking Chunin who couldn't seem to stop coughing which made the whiskered teen wonder why the hell he was still on duty if he was so sick. He scratched his cheek for a moment, then glanced over towards the Suna team, just as Anko had described, not a single scratch on them. To get through the forest of death, you'd either have to be unbelievably strong, or be a special kind of crazy. The girl amongst the Suna team took notice of the looks they were getting from her fellow blonde, she then smirked and walked over to him with a smirk as she asked, see anything you like handsome? Okay she was now flirting with him, that's a new one. Naruto blushed for a moment before regaining his composure and replied, maybe, I see a lovely desert rose in front of me. Tamari, am I correct? He asked, remembering his first encounter with her and the others when Konohamaru bumped into that katsu guy by accident. The blonde Kunoichi smirked a little as she replied, yup, that's me. Nice to meet you cutie, mind if I have your name? What team are you from anyway? I don't recognize you. The whiskered team gave a small grin as he spoke, the name's Naruto Uzumaki. We met before the exams, I think you tried flirting with my other teammate but he ignored you like the ass he was. Tamari raised an eyebrow for a moment as she pondered over his words, wait a second, blonde hair and whisker marks. No, it couldn't be. 
Holy, you're that loud-mouthed kid from before? No freaking way. She spoke out in surprise, a rather common reaction after his sudden transformation. Yeah, I know. Difference is like night and day, huh? He answered with a small shrug, all while his fellow blonde eyed him up and down. Gotta say, love the new look. She spoke with a flirty wink, which kinda made Naruto blush a little again. He was used to such gestures from Anko, but he never received them from other girls before. I appreciate that. If you're interested, I could take you out for dinner later. He spoke without really thinking, when it registered in his mind what he had just said, he started to scream internally for his stupidity, until what Tamari said next threw him for a loop. I might just take you up on that. It's not often I get to relax these days, and I have had a killer craving for some good ramen. You know any good ramen places? She asked with a small smirk. Wait, that sounded like a, yes, and she was craving ramen? Oh hell yes. Trying to contain his excitement the whiskered teen answered. Hey. A woman after my own heart. As a matter of fact, I know the absolute best ramen joint in Konoha, if not the Shinobi Nations. Let me know whenever you're free and I'll be more than happy to take you there. At that, the Suna Kunoichi smiled and then took a step forward and traced a lone finger down his chest and spoke in a husky voice. I'll hold you to that. Show me a good time, and I'll show you how a real Kunoichi can handle a kanai. Stay alive until then sweetheart. Tamari then mimed a kiss towards her fellow blonde before sauntering away, leaving behind a blushing Naruto. Damn, that girl was forward. Not that it was a bad thing. That was definitely an interesting encounter. Now that he thought about it, he didn't really know much about the other villages or the shinobi and kunoichi that lived there, it might be interesting getting to know people from other villages. He then glanced over and saw the form of Ino Yamanaka, one of his old classmates and yet another Sasuke fangirl, albeit not on the same level as most which made Ino far more tolerable. He grinned and decided to try flirting with her and seeing how she reacted. If nothing else, the reaction towards his new looks would be pretty funny. The Jinchuriki walked over towards the clan heiress and spoke politely to get her attention, Good afternoon ma'am. Afternoon. What can I, humana humana, Ino spoke back but then her voice fell upon seeing Naruto's new form with her eyes widening and her mouth being left wide open. She quickly snapped out of her stupor and blushed as she spoke, Hi there. Is there something I can do for you? Are you a proctor or a participant? What team are you from? I can tell you're from Konoha. Are you perhaps, alone? She almost whispered out that last part in a slightly husky voice. Wow, that worked fast. Seemed like just looking at him was enough to leave girls weak in the knees. I certainly hope so. It is Ino Yamanaka right? I was told that you had the looks of a beautiful princess, those stories don't seem to do you any justice. To answer a few of your questions, I am indeed a participant and I'm here with my team. He answered being sure to turn on the charm, or at least do his best to be charming, and for some reason it seemed to be working since the young mind walker had stars in her eyes. Oh ho ho. Stop it. You're gonna make me melt into a puddle of goo with that kind of praise. She gushed while placing her hands on her cheeks to try and hide her blushing face. Um, Ino? Who are you talking to? Choji asked as he and Shikamaru approached, the Akamichi munching on a seemingly endless supply of chips from the bag he was holding. Ino gained an annoyed look as she stamped her foot and growled out, Guys, this blonde Adonis is clearly flirting with me and is showering me with praises and, come to think of it, I don't think I asked for his name. The Yamanaka muttered upon realizing her blunder, so she clapped her hands together and gave a bright smile as she asked her fellow blonde, Sorry handsome, but what was your name again? Naruto chuckled and replied in a slightly snarky voice, Almost hurts that you don't recognize me guys. Though for your convenience, Naruto Uzumaki, at your service. The sounds of glass shattering rang out seemingly out of nowhere as Choji accidentally inhaled some of his chips, while Shikamaru jaw dropped and Ino stood frozen like a deer in the headlights. The Yamanaka heiress was the first to regain her senses as she snarled, Naruto you bastard, don't go putting on a henge and messing with me. She then sent a kick to his midsection, her foot landing hard against his abs, then she quickly regretted this as she felt as if she had just kicked a wall of concrete. Ow! 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 She muttered while hopping up and down on one foot while clutching her injured foot and attempting to soothe the pain. Naruto scratched his cheek with a lone finger and replied. It's not a henge. 
This is really me. Can someone help Choji? He's kinda turning blue. Shikamaru grabbed his best friend by the waist and started performing the Heimlich maneuver to help clear Choji's airway while muttering about, damn troublesome blondes. Naruto shrugged his shoulders and spoke, sorry about that Eno. I mainly wanted to see your reaction to the new look. I'll make it up to you, maybe over dinner? The blonde mind walker glared at the whiskered teen and replied in a slightly irritated voice, I'll hold you to that since I expect compensation for this. You better not skip out on me either or I'll never forgive you. At that, Naruto simply nodded and gave a two fingered salute before walking off, leaving behind the Ino Shika Cho team, although Ino couldn't but stare into his back as he walked away. Damn, I gotta admit those abs were rock hard, very nice, she thought to herself with a small blush and then gave a quiet giggle. As Naruto walked away, he spotted the form of Rock Lee and his team, with the Taijutsu user himself performing push ups, using only his pinky finger. Wow, gotta admire his dedication. He was kind of odd, but he seemed like a very earnest sort of fellow. This would definitely be a good chance to talk with him and his team a bit to see what made them tick. He approached the thickly eyebrowed teen and greeted, Hello there, Rock Lee San. At his greeting, Lee hopped to his feet and gave an enthusiastic bow towards the blonde. Greetings, stranger. My apologies, but it seems you have me at a disadvantage, might I have your name? Lee asked and for a moment the whiskered teen considered giving it, but smirked to himself and decided to hold off on that part for a bit. Also, was he really that hard to recognize now? Almost no one seemed to recognize him after his changes, then again, he could understand the confusion with his new build and clothes that likely helped throw people off. The blonde Uzumaki cleared his throat and spoke while ignoring the taijutsu user's question, I saw your little spar with Sasuke Uchiha. Gotta say, I felt kinda disappointed when the finale was interrupted. I would have loved to see how that would have ended. Lee couldn't help but frown a bit in disappointment since he too felt that match came to a premature close. Oh. You saw that huh? Although to be fair, I may have gotten carried away at that time. Even so, it was an interesting experience. Allow me to ask you stranger San, which do you believe to be better? Hard work or talent? Naruto hummed in thought remembering the marks he had seen on Lee's hands that were hidden beneath those bandages and how easily he had mopped the floor with the Uchiha before answering, having talent is all well and good, but talent alone can only carry you so far. Now, if you take that talent and polish and nurture it with hard work and training, that'd be a different story. Of course people might also have talents or skills they themselves didn't know that they had to begin with. To put a long story short, talent is meaningless without hard work. So therefore I think hard work is better but of course having some talent doesn't hurt either. When the blonde had finished giving his answer, Lee gave an approving thumbs up and flashed a grin that sparkled. I wholeheartedly agree with you, Stranger San. I look forward to a potential match with you. Lee spoke enthusiastically, making the blonde chuckle a little bit. He then saw both of Lee's teammates walk up. The girl he remembered being called Tenten and their third teammate Neji was of the Hyuga clan, as evidenced by the unique eye color related to his clan. The bun-haired girl gave a friendly wave and spoke, Hey there, we heard you guys talking. I was kinda curious, what's your take on women being in the shinobi corps? Her question caught the Uzumaki off guard since he wasn't expecting it and could only give a confused, huh? Upon seeing his obvious confusion she continued to speak and clarified, There are some people who think that kunoichi are only good for seduction missions, as if they're cheap prostitutes to be used and pimped out. I want to prove that Kunoichi can be just as capable as anyone else, just like the Sanin Tsunade. Naruto gave an understanding nod, getting a much better picture about her question and replied, I'm not really knowledgeable about seduction missions, however, I don't really see any distinction between men versus women. Some are more capable than others, there's some good, some bad, and some downright awful across the whole damn board. Though to me, what really matters is competence, loyalty, and dedication regardless if one's a shinobi or kunoichi. Upon hearing his answer, the brown-haired girl smiled warmly as she spoke, that's a pretty open-minded viewpoint, one I can definitely get behind. The blonde simply shrugged his shoulders and gave a two-fingered salute. Tenton then asked, so uh, what was your name again? At that, the blonde gave a sly grin and replied, Naruto Uzumaki. Nice to meet you. Ah. Nice to meet you too Naru. The bun-haired girl spoke but then fell silent as she processed what he had just said. 
Both she and Lee stared at the blonde with their mouths agape and then let out a loud, E-H-H-H-H-H-H. Naruto stuck his tongue out at them and then quickly walked away before they could question him about his new physique. That was, Naruto? From Kakashi's team? He looks way different than earlier. Neji questioned in surprise, raising an eyebrow since he wondered how someone could change so much so quickly. Amazing. Naruto-san tapped into his flames of youth and quickly built up his body to new levels. I must train ten times harder if I'm to catch up to him. Rock Lee shouted and then resumed his earlier push-ups using only his pinky finger. I don't think that's how it works Lee. No amount of training can beef up someone so quickly. Tenton tried to explain, but her bushy-browed teammate paid no attention to her as he continued his training. Meanwhile, Naruto chuckled to himself as he decided to try and find Hinata's team, he kinda wanted to see if he could get a reaction out of the stoic Shino Aburame. However, this plan came to a halt when the Sandame appeared in front of the crowd with the sickly-looking Chunin from earlier that was almost constantly coughing. Attention all participants, we are going to have a series of preliminary battles to further cull down the numbers of potential candidates. Many nobles, merchants, and other important dignitaries will be in attendance during the finals, and we wish to provide only the best of the best. The Sandame announced earning some murmurs from the remaining candidates. Naruto narrowed his eyes a bit, from what he could guess, the Chunin exams wasn't just a chance for Genin like themselves to gain a promotion to Chunin. The exams also had military and political implications. This was a chance to show off the best ninjas to potential clients for more business. If the clients see capable shinobi, then they would be far more likely to do business with their respective village. Still, this didn't really bother the blonde, all he had to focus on was winning and maybe wow the crowd with his new power, if he could get a proper handle on it. The sickly Chunin stepped forward and announced, I'm Hayate, and I'll be the proctor and referee for the preliminary matches. Rules are simple, anything goes except outside interference. First one to forfeit, get knocked out, or on the off chance die, is eliminated. If I declare a match is over, then it's over, full stop. Matchups will be randomized and displayed on the large monitor up there. If you want to back out before we start, now's the time. Any questions? Once the Chunin had finished speaking, he started a rather violent coughing fit. Naruto gave a small look of concern and spoke, This isn't related to the prelims, but, you okay? In response, Hayate casually waved off the blonde in dismissal, stating that he would be fine in a bit. Meanwhile, in the background, a spectacled shinobi was observing the blonde Uzumaki. Huh, very strange. It seems Naruto has a new physique. I certainly didn't sense the presence of a henge when we last met just before the first exam. Bah, I'll have to look into that later. Dosu and his team failed to report in about Sasuke-kun. Probably got themselves killed, the useless imbeciles. I'll have to stay and observe everything myself. Still, this could be interesting, so long as I don't tip my hand too much. The silver-haired shinobi thought to himself quietly, a small glint appearing on his glasses. His master Orochimaru was eagerly awaiting a report about the Uchiha's curse mark, and since their auto team failed, it would be up to himself to observe the Uchiha. Even so, Kabuto couldn't help but keep glancing at the Uzumaki in curiosity and wondered if he too had unlocked some form of new power. After a few moments of silence, no one bothered to forfeit, earning a nod from the sickly Chunin who spoke, All right then, no takers. First matchup will be. He left the sentence hanging and pointed towards the large monitor as a pair of names randomly flashed across the screen for a few seconds, until the names, Sasuke Uchiha vs Yoro Ikado, appeared. Yeesh. Sasuke right off the bat huh? And the mark hasn't been sealed yet. Naruto whispered to himself and then gave a concerned look towards the Sandane who had his hands clasped behind his back with a steely gaze as he gave a glare towards the Uchiha in question. Hiruzen then took notice of the Uzumaki, and as if sensing his concerns, the aged Hokage gave a reassuring smile as if to say, it'll be fine. The whiskered teen nodded in understanding but it still made him feel uneasy. Everyone except the selected combatants, please head to the observation areas above. The Hokage announced before vanishing in a swirl of leaves before reappearing again on one side of the viewing area above. Everyone else took the stairs, as Naruto and Sakura headed up, they found the forms of the team's respective senseis had arrived, including their own who was actually on time for once. Hey Kakashi. Been a while. 
Naruto greeted in a friendly tone since they hadn't seen him since the exams began. The silver-haired Jonin gave an eye smile as he replied, I suppose it has. My, my, Naruto-kun. I was informed that you had hit a growth spurt, but I wasn't expecting such a sudden change. It is kind of difficult to even recognize you in comparison to your previous form. The blonde rubbed the back of his head a bit since he couldn't really deny that. As many people had pointed out, he was pretty scrawny before his transformation. Sakura cleared her throat and then spoke, Sensei, were you also told about Sasuke? The copy ninja raised an eyebrow, noting that the pinkhead didn't say, Kun, as she usually did when referring towards the Uchiha. He decided not to comment on it and instead replied in a serious voice, Yeah. I was already informed of the situation. I have clear instructions from the Hokage to take Sasuke away as soon as possible so that the inhibitor seal can be placed on his curse mark, unfortunately that's going to have to wait until after this match. The Jonin bemused at the end with a slightly frustrated tone, knowing that this had to be resolved and quickly before either Orochimaru's influence got into Sasuke, or perhaps worse yet, the Uchiha gets a taste for the power the curse mark can provide and would want more. Both the Uzumaki and Haruno became silent as they stood next to the railing and observed the match. Although for the former, he quickly lost interest as he focused chakra into his fingers, making some sparks appear for a few moments. He sighed to himself, wishing he knew how to use this damn bloodline. So far, it granted him power over electricity and even allowed him to perform a technique similar to the Hiraishin, but how did it freaking work? He looked back during his fight with Haku who had a really amazing bloodline. He had to admit, there was only two reasons why he managed to win that fight. Firstly, Haku wasn't aiming to kill, if the ice user's goal was to kill him and Sasuke then they would have easily died a thousand times over given Haku's skill with his bloodline. Secondly, he had accidentally tapped into the power of the Kyubi which quickly turned the tide and overwhelmed Haku. While the Kyubi's chakra was a potent and valuable weapon in a pinch, he didn't want to become reliant on it and use it as a crutch. He wished he had mastery of his abilities like Haku did, the things the ice user could do was pretty incredible, like that ice mirror technique that had him and Sasuke on the ropes the whole. Naruto, your fingers. Sakura spoke, interrupting his musing as he glanced at her and then at his fingers which were now covered in a layer of ice and frost. Growing curious, the blonde slowly clenched his fist and then relaxed it as a small ice figurine of Haku and Zabuza appeared in his now open palm all the while both Kakashi and Sakura looked at this display with amazement in their eyes. Holy, I wasn't told that your bloodline was ice release. Kakashi spoke as he gently picked up and inspected the little figurine, admiring the superb and lifelike detailing. But, it was like lightning earlier. Sakura commented as she blinked her eyes several times. How the hell did Naruto jump from making lightning appear with a snap of his fingers to making little ice sculptures with ease? Weird. I was just thinking about Haku and his ice jutsu, Naruto muttered to himself, his bloodline revealing itself to be more amazing and mysterious than he initially realized if it also granted him control over ice and lightning, but did it stop there? Just what else could it do? Before he could ponder on it further, he heard a shout of, Lion's Barrage, and saw the Uchiha take down his opponent, though given the bored expressions of the other spectators it didn't seem like he missed that much with this fight. Naruto glanced at the Uchiha and saw a series of black markings receding into the spot where his curse mark was. Either the Uchiha had tapped into its power or it attempted to influence him in the heat of the match, or both. He couldn't say since he wasn't paying attention and didn't wish to make any false accusations. I think that's my cue. Kakashi announced as he vanished in a blur of motion then reappeared next to the Uchiha. The copy ninja seemed to be whispering something to the self-proclaimed avenger which put a sour look on the Uchiha's face. The Jonin then placed his hand on Sasuke's shoulder and the two vanished from sight. Both remaining members of Team 7 breathed a sigh of relief since that particular situation seemed to be handled for the time being. Naruto then noticed that the Hokage, Anko and Hayate seemed to be quietly conversing with one another. Their conversation ended with the sickly Chunin giving a thumbs up before both Anko and the Hokage retreated back to their own viewing platform. Hayate coughed a few times then announced, We'll next be having a special battle royale match. There will be five random participants, and the last one standing will be declared the victor. The other participants quietly murmured amongst themselves, undoubtedly wondering who would be picked. Some commented that this was likely a means to also speed up the process of elimination, 
not that they really minded. After a few moments, five names appeared on the large monitor. Naruto Uzumaki, Hanada Hayuga, Kiba Inazuka, Choji Akamichi, Kabuto Yakushi. Looks like I'm up. Naruto commented as he cracked his knuckles and leapt over the railing, softly landing in the arena. He glanced towards his teammate Sakura who gave him an encouraging smile, then he looked towards both the Sandame and Anko who were also quietly supporting him, the snake mistress then blew a kiss in his direction making him blush a little bit. Yahoo finally, it's our time to shine Akamaru. Let's show these chumps what makes a real alpha, shouted the familiar voice of Kiba with his canine partner giving a bark of agreement as they also entered the arena, followed by their teammate Hinata who was currently staring at her blonde crush, her face turning red in color. Choji then entered with a look of determination on his face, no doubt due to the fact his sensei likely promised him food if he did a good job. Finally, Kabuto entered with a timid expression on his face, but Naruto could see that the spectacled shinobi was constantly scanning the area and opposition, no doubt he was likely trying to hide his skills. Rules are the same as a standard match, and as previously stated, last man standing wins. Any questions? Hayate asked while crossing his arms and taking a few steps back just to be safe. Yeah. Where's the Dobi Naruto? Why's that guy standing in his place? Or stand ins even allowed? The Inazuka asked while pointing towards the blonde figure who was actually the Uzumaki himself who had a slightly irritated expression on his face. Really? Who the hell else could he be? The Rikudu Senen. Um, Kiba. Dude. That is Naruto. Choji spoke up to answer the dog boy's question. Nah. There's no way that could be Naruto. The Naruto we all know is some wimpy little punk that couldn't fight his way out of a wet paper bag. The Inazuka scoffed with a mocking grin on his face. Naruto scowled deeply and then spoke. Oi, Proctor San. Hurry up and start the match. I want to kick that dummy's teeth in. In response to the Uzumaki's request, the Chunin nodded his head and shouted, Hajime. As soon as the match was called to start, the blonde Uzumaki disappeared in a flash of golden light, then reappeared in front of the Inazuka and swiftly kicked Kiba square in the mouth, sending him flying back. A yellow flash. Almost everyone shouted in awe at the display of the legendary technique. Most everyone present had heard stories of the Yandaimi Hokage's infamous Hiraishin technique and now some of them were seeing it with their own eyes once again. No mistaking it. That was definitely the Hiraishin, but unlike Minato, Naruto doesn't seem to require a marker. Hiraizen muttered quietly to himself as he watched the match unfold. Partial Expansion Jutsu. Human Boulder. Choji shouted as he expanded his midsection and then began to rapidly spin much like a ball and was headed in Naruto's direction since he recognized the blonde as the most immediate threat. Naruto smirked as he saw the Akamichi coming and spoke to himself, Okay Haku. This one's for you, sacred art. Ice Age. He shouted at the end and slammed his open palm on the floor, causing ice to appear on the floor of the arena. This caused the Akamichi to speed up even faster as he rolled towards the Uzumaki, who then grinned and leapt up, then delivered a swift kick to Choji's round form. The impact was enough to send the chip lover towards the wall at high speed and then he bounced off and rocketed towards the opposite wall. Help! I can't stop! Choji shouted as he helplessly bounced from wall to wall like a human pinball, the lack of traction making it impossible to control himself. The Akamichi wanted to disengage the jutsu but knew that if he did so at this speed, he'd be flattened on impact and be turned into a pancake. At the same time, he was starting to get sick from the constant spinning which meant he was in a no-win situation. Hey Choji! Say, uncle, and I'll help stop ya. Naruto offered as he watched his former classmate bounce around, he almost felt a little bad for the Akamichi right now. You're wide open, shouted Kiba as he appeared behind the blonde, attempting to take down the Uzumaki, but before he could attack Naruto, the dog boy was struck in his stomach by Hinata as she landed an open palm strike against Kiba's stomach sending the Inazuka flying a few feet away, and by a stroke of bad luck, the Inazuka was struck again by an out-of-control Choji which sent the self-proclaimed Alpha falling face first into the icy floor. I'll back you up Naruto-kun, Hinata announced as she took on her clan's signature gentle fist stance, her Byakugan activated as she stared ahead in her teammate's direction. Hinata! What the hell? We're teammates, aren't you supposed to be on my side? Kiba shouted angrily at the fact that his own teammate had just attacked him. 
Sorry Kiba, but I refuse to fight Naruto-kun, that aside, I wish to take revenge for some crass commentary you made about me and Kurenai sensei behind our backs when you thought we couldn't hear you. Hanada spoke in an uncharacteristic tone of anger, her words sending a chill down the dog boy's spine as he glanced up towards the observation area where their sensei was giving him a menacing look, as if she were silently promising, I'll get you later. Naruto smirked and spoke to his new partner, appreciate the assist. Say, where's the pup? He questioned at the end since Akamaru could usually be seen riding around inside of Kiba's hoodie. So where was his canine partner now? On the left Naruto-kun. Hanada shouted, prompting the blonde to look towards his left and see a second Kiba charging towards them. Undoubtedly it was Akamaru transformed to look like his human counterpart. The blonde narrowed his eyes, and then he caught a glimpse of something inside his mind, he wasn't sure what it was, but something in the back of his mind was telling him to act quickly, and just like that, a plan formed in his mind. Offer still open Choji. Naruto called out as the Akamichi was still randomly bouncing around, and in response the human bowling ball finally cried out, Uncle, uncle, make me stop and I'll forfeit the match already, please. The Jinchuriki grinned and shouted, No problem. Disengage your jutsu on my signal. He then glanced towards the transformed Akamaru who let out a ferocious bark before performing the fang over fang technique. The blonde raised his arms into a defensive stance and waited patiently as the transformed canine rapidly approached him. Then at the last second, Naruto grabbed Hinata by the waist and replaced the both of them with Choji. Akamaru then impacted against Choji causing the transformed canine to bounce off the chip lover with a confused bark while the Akamichi started rolling in a new direction, now Choji. Naruto called out and then let out a blast of wind from his mouth causing a large snowbank to form around the area where Choji was headed. The Akamichi disengaged the jutsu and flew through the air until he fell into the soft snow that cushioned his fall. P. Proctor, I forfeit. The chip lover called out weakly, and then a loud vomiting and retching noise could be heard that made everyone present cringe in disgust. In the stands, Asuma felt rather bad for his student, but was proud that he made a good effort. He'd have to treat Choji to some barbecue later as a reward. All right. You stay put until the match is over. Everyone else is free to continue. Hayate announced, prompting the other participants to shout a quick, hi, in understanding. Naruto turned towards the form of Kabuto who had remained on the sidelines this whole time, with the former noticing a cocky little smirk on the silver-haired shinobi's face. It kind of ticked the blonde off a bit since he hated smug-looking people. Yo. Hanada, I'll let you handle Kiba and Akamaru. I'll take on Kabuto. Naruto announced with his hands in his pockets. Of course Naruto-kun. Leave everything to me. Hanada spoke silently promising that she wouldn't let her teammates get past her, no matter what. For years now, a great burden had been forced on her since she was the heiress of her clan, a small part of her also felt guilty for the death of her late uncle, even in spite of knowing that what happened was out of her control. Even so, she didn't wish to be a helpless weakling. If her teammate so much as made a move against Naruto, she would be sure to aim for some very painful pressure points on Kiba's body. Naruto walked in the direction of the spectacled shinobi and spoke, Yo, you enjoying the show or something? You seemed pretty comfy in the background. Kabuto chuckled and adjusted his glasses as he replied, I guess you could say that. I'm fairly used to fading away into the background. It's not often I get to take the center stage. On another note, I am quite impressed by your ice release, I had no idea you had relations with the Yuki clan. Naruto shrugged his shoulders and replied, I don't know anything about that. At any rate, let's see what you're really made of Kabuto-san. I've been wondering, did you fail seven times in a row because you majorly suck? Or did you fail seven times because you were waiting and biding your time for something? The silver-haired shinobi smirked as a glare from his glasses hit his eyes for a brief moment as he answered, I'll leave that part to your imagination. The blonde smirked back and spoke, I was kinda expecting an answer like that. Ah well, let's go. The blonde spoke quietly at the end as he grabbed his trench coat and then threw it off, exposing his upper body and the golden dragon tattoo on his back. Whoa! Since when did Naruto get a freaking tattoo? Ino Yamanaka shouted from above, her face turning red at getting a full view of her fellow blonde's muscular form. No idea, but that's a pretty cool looking tattoo. Shikamaru commented, feeling a sense of awe from seeing the golden dragon. 
Kabuto gave a haughty grin as a green glow enveloped one of his hands, waiting for the blonde to make the first move. Naruto then snapped his fingers, causing numerous mirrors of ice to appear surrounding the silver-haired shinobi who wondered what the blonde was up to. The Jinchuriki mentally thanked Haku for the inspiration and then spoke, Divine Art. Laser Circus Array. The blonde's form was then enveloped in a golden energy and then vanished as the sound of thunder filled the arena as a lightning bolt sped towards the first mirror within reach. Shit. Kabuto shouted upon realizing what his opponent was about to pull, he quickly dashed forward hoping to escape, but it was too late as the lightning began bounce to and from the different mirrors creating a net of golden electricity that cut off the spectacled ninja as he found himself caught in one of the beams that delivered an immensely powerful electric shock, making him scream in pain his body going rigid as it tensed up, leaving him unable to move. The array of lightning came to a stop as Naruto reappeared a short distance away as he stumbled a bit, as if he were dizzy. Whoa! Gotta refine that one a bit. He mumbled to himself as he tried to clear his vision, behind him Kabuto growled a bit, his body covered in burns as he focused his chakra in order to perform his regeneration technique. The pain quickly numbed as he recovered and then he leapt in the blonde's direction with a chakra scalpel at the ready. Shouldn't leave yourself open. Kabuto muttered and then he saw the tattoo on Naruto's back, and all of a sudden something flashed within the spy's mind as an almost forgotten memory appeared. Flashback. Nono Yakushi's orphanage. It was late at night in the orphanage and a young Kabuto woke up feeling thirsty. After acquiring a drink of water to quench his thirst, he was on his way back to his room until he noticed a door was left slightly cracked open and candlelight was coming from inside. Growing curious, he looked inside and saw the form of the matron, Nono herself kneeling in front of a small shrine and tapestry that showed a fearsome golden dragon. The nun quietly prayed, her voice too low for him to hear. His curiosity getting the better of him the young boy entered inside, his small footsteps making the floorboards creak, alerting his mother figure to his presence. She slowly turned around and greeted him with a warm smile before speaking, Oh. Kabuto-kun. You're up late. Come, sit with me. We can pray together if you like. The spectacled child stared for a few moments before glancing up towards the tapestry, a small chill running down his spine as he felt as if the dragon emblazoned on it was staring into his soul. Who's that you're praying to? The nun answered him in a warm and soft voice. This is Koiru. An old friend of mine once told me many stories about him. It is said that Koryu often goes into periods of hibernation, awaiting the day when humankind needs him most so he can bring happiness and miracles to good people, and bring misery and destruction to those with evil in their hearts. The white haired boy gave a skeptical look and replied, That sounds silly, even in the shinobi world, dragons are a thing of myth. Why pray to a thing like that anyway? Nono giggled at him for a brief moment, then explained, perhaps a bit, but I think it is better to believe in something than nothing at all. Without faith or belief in something better, there is no hope. That aside, do you really need to see something for it to be real? Maybe not, but it sounds too good to be true for a dragon to magically appear and fix all the world's problems. Sounds almost like a fairy tale. Kabuto responded, he then yawned tiredly and excused himself to return back to bed, leaving behind his mother figure to frown slightly. As he walked out of the room he thought he heard her say something like, I pray you don't go down a dark path when you're older. He turned to her briefly for a moment then shrugged it off believing that he was hearing things and continued on to his bedroom. End flashback. Time seemed to slow down as Kabuto snapped himself out of that memory and thought bitterly, miracles? Happiness? Hope? There's no such things. His chakra scalpel almost seemed to hum as he closed the distance on his target and slashed at the blonde. However Naruto pivoted to the side, avoiding the blade of chakra with ease and then smirked. Shouldn't let yourself get distracted. Naruto spoke as a sphere of chakra quickly appeared in his open palm, a technique that the jonin in the audience immediately recognized on sight. The Rasengan, a technique developed by the Yandaimi himself. Shit. I lost focus when that memory appeared. Kabuto thought to himself and cursed himself for his careless mistake. Naruto then slammed the sphere into Kabuto's gut and shouted, Arctic Rasengan. The Rasengan hit its mark as it connected with the spectacled shinobi's abdomen, upon impact the sphere expanded as countless tiny shards of ice seemed to swirl around Kabuto, trapping him inside a mini blizzard that turned pink in color as the icicles sliced his body to pieces. When the jutsu ended, 
Kabuto was barely even standing as his blood seemed to drip from everywhere. Countless cuts littered his body and his clothes seemed to only be held together by a few threads. Finally, he fell limply to the ground with a wet splat. Yeesh. If that guy isn't dead, I betcha he's wishing that he is. Konkuro muttered with his arms crossed, his sister nodding in agreement while Gara looked on with a small gleam of interest in his eye. That guy, Naruto Uzumaki. He's different from before. Interesting. Perhaps he may yet prove to be a more worthy opponent to help prove my existence. The sand user thought to himself, his lips twitching into a ghost of a smirk as he seemed to relish the thought of crushing someone so powerful. He then felt something touch his mind, a feeling he was quite familiar with as a voice spoke in his mind, Oi, Gara, don't fight that guy no matter what. Wait, what? That was not a phrase the crimson-haired shinobi had ever heard from his mother, he wanted to question the voice in his mind, but it quickly retreated before he had a chance to question why. Was that, actual fear he heard from the voice in his mind? Naruto Uzumaki, Gara muttered quietly, it would seem there was far more to that person than he initially believed, how very curious. Meanwhile, some of the janin were gossiping with each other over what just happened. Sheesh, not only did Naruto use the Rasengan, he added an element to it with a rather nasty effect. Asuma spoke while taking a drag from his cigarette, his students Shikamaru and Ino looking up at him quizzically. The Rasengan? I've never heard of that jutsu, Ino muttered as she glanced down at the bleeding form of Kabuto, it would be almost a miracle if he managed to survive his injuries. It's an original jutsu that was developed by the Yandaimi Hokage, my sensei. Spoke the form of Kakashi who appeared out of seemingly thin air, shocking the chain smoker's students who were startled by his sudden reappearance. Wah! When did you get back? What happened to Sasuke? And when did you teach something like that to Naruto? Ino asked in a rapid fire manner, earning a small eye smile from the copy ninja. Oh, just a minute or so ago. I had to take Sasuke away for special treatment for a prior injury that was bothering him. Also, it was back during our time in Snow Country when we encountered enemy ninja. I figured it would be prudent to teach Naruto a more offensive technique, so I showed him how to use the Rasengan. Still, I have to commend him for combining it with an element like that. That icy shrapnel effect can be quite devastating, Kakashi explained, his voice containing obvious pride for his student. Below in the arena, Hayate called out, Time out. Medics. Retrieve candidates Kabuto Yakushi and Kiba Inazuka immediately. Candidate Choji, you are now cleared to leave the arena at this time. As medics appeared in puffs of smoke carrying stretchers to transport the fallen shinobi. Choji obviously had the least serious injuries, so he was free to head back to the observation area if he wished to stay and watch. In the background, Naruto raised an eyebrow and glanced over in Kiba's direction and noticed that he seemed to be clutching his family jewels and seemed to be in a lot of pain while Hinata gave a cheerful smile, the kind that held not so subtle undertones of sadistic satisfaction on her face. Wow, the blonde Uzumaki kinda wished he could have watched that fight. Akamaru dutifully followed after his partner as the medics carried the dog boy away, followed by the still bleeding form of Kabuto, though for some reason, Naruto felt as if the silver-haired ninja was glaring at him despite having already fallen unconscious. Weird. Maybe it was his imagination. Still, it was down to him and Hinata now. While he was appreciative of the backup before, the situation had changed now. Okay. The injured have been cleared out, candidates are free to continue fighting or forfeit. Hayate announced and then promptly coughed a few time. Hinata had a conflicted look on her face showing that she was considering forfeiting the match which didn't go unnoticed by her crush. The blonde felt something boiling in him as he pointed an accusatory finger at the heiress and spoke in an almost angry, Hinata, don't you dare. This gained the Hayuga's attention as she suddenly gained a deer in the headlights type of expression. She stood there stunned for a moment but quickly snapped herself out of it as she replied, S sorry Naruto-kun, but I don't want to fight you, I just. You just what? want to quit halfway before you even give yourself a chance, screw that and screw you, if you forfeit, I'll never forgive you, the Uzumaki shouted as a golden aura seemed to flicker around him but quickly faded before anyone could acknowledge that it was even there, the heiress seemed surprised by Naruto's sudden change in attitude, but he was right, she had told herself that she was going to forfeit so that Naruto could advance and so they wouldn't have to fight, 
but really she was just opting out because of her own weakness and insecurities. She had always been in the background, she had watched him on many occasions, but never acted on her feelings. She could have done so many things to help him in the past, she could have even just been someone to listen to him and let him vent out his frustrations, but again she would make an excuse and avoid him. That was always her problem, she often ran from whatever was bothering her instead of facing it. Naruto-kun, I am sorry, I suppose that by attempting to forfeit, I was also insulting you and putting myself down. Hanada spoke, her face becoming more stern as she clenched her fists, her eyes burning fiercely with newfound determination. Whoa, is that really my student? Kuranai asked herself since she had never seen Hinata make a face like that, it was almost as if she were a different person now. Somehow or another, Naruto had lit a fire inside of the Hyuga heiress and it was quickly becoming a raging inferno. Naruto grinned as he cracked his knuckles and replied, Damn straight. Come at me with everything you've got Hinata. Don't hold back against me. All your strength, all your bottled up feelings, unleash it all and try to beat me, I'll take it all. Tears quickly flowed down Hinata's cheeks as she grit her teeth as emotions that she had long suppressed suddenly exploded inside her heart, for her, this was no longer a chunin exam match, this was a chance to finally let out all of her feelings and Naruto was ready and willing to take the full force of her hidden fury and frustrations. With a war cry, Hinata tore off her oversized coat, exposing her upper body that was covered by a mesh armor much like Anko wears and then she charged at the blonde with her Byakugan activating. Naruto. She screeched out as the Uzumaki charged towards her as well, then the two collided as they slammed their shoulders together, pushing hard against one another. The atmosphere suddenly became so intense that everyone came to one singular conclusion, the Chunin exams had only just begun. Meanwhile, undisclosed location. So we are in agreement then, spoke a female voice as a group of people murmured contentedly at the new arrangements, while a certain figure wearing a black cloak with red clouds watched silently. For many years, the major shinobi nations held the greatest power in the shinobi world, which often left the minor nations at their mercy. Resulting in them often getting caught in the crossfire of the shinobi wars, which only left them three options to survive, train their forces to the point they can match numerically superior forces, bend the knee to a greater power for protection, or form an alliance with other minor villages for mutual protection. Today, the third had been achieved as four minor nations were ready to make an official alliance. The nations of Kusa, Star, Keys, and Demons had all formed a pact together. Kusa and Star would provide their shinobi for military purposes. Keys would use their forces for gathering intelligence and information, and Demon Country would provide other necessary materials and the gifts of their priestess who was also their representative. Excellent. Now we must decide on our first course of action. Although we have agreed to this alliance, it is still in its infancy. I think it would be prudent to ally with a major nation until we can act more, autonomously. Spoke the representative from Kusa, a mysterious woman with silver hair named Ryuzetsu. The others nodded in agreement, the only question was, which nation should they ally with until they gathered their strength? The representative of Key Country, a woman known as Hanari suddenly piped in. According to our most recent intelligence, Suna and Otto have been gathering their forces, we believe that they may be planning to assault Konoha at some point during the Chunin exams. However, it should be noted that Konoha has recently nurtured strong ties to other villages. The leaders of Wave, Snow, and Taki have all recently visited the Hokage personally and are said to have offered extremely generous gifts of thanks. These nations all have one thing in common, they were all aided by Konoha's newest carnation of Team 7. Consisting of Kakashi Hitaki and his student Sakura Haruno, Sasuke Uchiha, and Naruto Uzumaki. Additionally, in each instance, it has been consistently reported that Naruto Uzumaki is the driving force behind all of these happenings. Who is this, Naruto Uzumaki, Shien, the priestess of Demon Country asked with the other village representatives sharing in her curiosity. Hanari cleared her throat and reported, some parts of his file are surprisingly well classified, on public record, he had an unremarkable time in the Konoha Academy where he failed three consecutive years, until unexpectedly being rewarded with a shinobi headband. Since then, he has accomplished far more in his short tenure as a genin than most shinobi ever accomplish in their entire careers. It is my personal opinion that such an individual should be watched closely. She and hummed slightly in thought, and then her eyes seemed to glow as she received a vision of the future. She then smiled and spoke, 
I strongly advise we should consider making an ally of Konoha. The representative of Star, a man named Akahoshi gave a small sneer and spoke, E.H. Why Konoha? Sure it is said they're the strongest village, but it's also said they've been in decline in recent years. The priestess then answered in a cryptic manner, I'm afraid I am not permitted to say too much, but I will say that a great turning point in history will come from Konoha. If we do not take care, we will be cast aside and blown away by the storm. Konan san. Come, we must make for Konoha, we have business to attend to there. In the background, a woman with distinctive blue hair and an origami flower nodded as she quietly followed her charge out of the meeting chamber. She had initially been hired to act as a bodyguard for the priestess, a somewhat boring job, but she appreciated the quiet since it helped her get away from the more unstable members of Akatsuki, while she didn't fully understand Shein's ability to see into the future, there was no doubting its accuracy. While she wouldn't question her charge, she couldn't help but wonder, what business did they have in Konoha anyway? The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.